We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Welcome back, everyone. Really uh, long time since we've seen each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had to do this live stream in sort of celebration of pretty much everything. But uh, what are you drinking? Just uh, it's a local beer, basically. Uh, New Glarus uh, Brinko. Uh, they have a state exclusive one called Spotted Cow. So I just doxed myself. Oops. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't have time to go to the store, and I already told you uh, in the club what I'm drinking tonight, and I'm just going to be drinking uh, Buchanan's 18, and uh, just finishing it off here as a celebratory, because um, it's what I have, but pretty good, because we can definitely down this without any ice. Easy, it's smooth enough. Plenty smooth, actually. It's that shrimple. It's that shrimple, and someone said that is a good beer, so compliment to you. All right. Oh, yay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, begin with the topics. Again, if you're you know, not happy that we'll be drinking potentially some alcohol during the production, I apologize in advance, but sorry, a little bit not sorry. Um, so Meta After Hours reported earnings and the stock jumps 15.22%. We'll talk about Amazon in a second. Um, so there's a lot to be said about it. Uh, roughly speaking, I guess we'll begin with what happened. What happened with Meta in this time period? So let's take a look at that five-year chart. Absolutely ridiculous. What a roller coaster. What a roller coaster and what a time to just, I don't know, see it play out. And the story 2020 looks like it was obvious. I'm saying 2020 vision looks like, like it was obvious. You'll see a lot of people uh, saying that, um, you know, good thing that as far as the uh, let's call it for the record. Um, the beautiful part about having a presence here on YouTube and producing content, both live and non live, um, you have a let's call it stamp in time in which someone can go back and be the judge, both of the portfolio updates or the pitches. And the pitch of a meta is still out there, uh, published November around November 20 something. Uh, I, don't want, I want to say 28. It's titled Meta is Uninvestable, Broken Trash. In fact, yeah. I'll actually bring up the video because the whole point of the titling was to make fun of all the YouTubers at the time who were posting videos. Um, one of them, most notably, being Joseph Carlson. Oof, there goes the moving bus. And just got thrown under it. Yeah. Let me pull up the video just for reference. So, I forgot. Did we like as a community like twist your arm and or like enable you into a, a bad, a deliberately bad thumbnail, <laughs> like fire and like a surprise expression and all that? Well, at the time, I was more always a proponent and and full. Let's call it enthusiast for yeah. Let's let's make fun of the uh, people who hype stuff up. Let's put fire around things. Let's do whatever we want. Let's have fun with it. And that's still to this day what YouTube is. It's it's really supposed to be for fun. Um, and, you know, the title of this video is reflective of what other content creators were making at the time. So just to make fun of them, I also copied some hyperbolic title. And if you watch the video, 33 minutes of it is basically saying it's definitely not broken trash. This is probably the opportunity of this five years now not the best investment ever who could have seen nvidia i didn't see nvidia but it's done really well for us um and i can't really get behind nvidia's valuation but i can with meta and if you watch this video a lot of the things that i touched upon are still prevalent to what we're going to see today in the earnings um and just the spark notes of it was that this is a company that can produce tremendous amounts of cash flow people just seemingly forgot and the capex cycle that they were undergoing was necessary and would actually benefit the forward cash flow projections of the company. In summary, you had the company Meta, which was producing inside of itself a hyperscaler, something that the other competitors could not do. And people did not get this. They were making up things. 
Um, at the time you had people, I'm going to shout out some more names, Chama Palihapitiya, who is absolutely spewing complete BS, uh, saying, making up numbers. I don't know what else to tell you besides he was fibbing um, regarding how much money Mark Zuckerberg was saying they were going to spend on the metaverse. And when I was looking at the investor presentation deck and the public filings, it, I didn't see the same numbers he was saying. Uh, I think he was just pulling numbers out of his, you know, whatever and projecting out into the future. What I saw was there was a tremendous amount of investment happening into the infrastructure for family of apps. Now, there was a significant, not not insignificant investment happening into the metaverse, but uh, everyone kind of just ran with that story. And I think that's just the opportunity that presented itself simultaneously being part of a weak market. You had almost like the converging of two perfect storms that gave this opportunity and so there's also another video that i'll sort of shout out here it's a live stream i think i titled it if i remember the title correctly my last portfolio update and i'll explain why it's titled it that way so let me go to my channel and then i'll bring it up in a second and there was a particular reason why i ended up deciding uh to title it that because at the time i was really contemplating um that it should be uh, yes november 6 2022 so i'll i'll show it here for you guys as well. well let me come back so if you go watch this live stream i know it's an hour long it's crazy long you don't want to watch an hour long so i'll just summarize it for you um essentially what i was talking about in this live stream was i'm going to do something that might be um irresponsible if someone were to copy me but it's what i think is best for my own investment journey and that was to go extremely heavy into meta um and that's hindsight is 2020 it's worked out phenomenally but that's again the rationale or the reason for the titling again a bit hyperbolic um and then because of community let's say outreach uh, I kept doing the portfolio updates. The community itself, you guys who watch Capital Mindset, said, no, we're not going to do that. We're free thinkers in our own right. Um, you know, Please keep doing the portfolio updates because that at least gives us like a framework for what it is you're putting your money behind. And club members, they see, of course, the brokerage statement. So that was never going to stop. And then they've seen the evolution over time in the, in, in the investment process through the holding co., um, and you've been able to kind of see how through this period of time, we've adapted the different allocations. Uh, so shout out to you, all you club members out there. And uh, shout out to a uh, certain someone who shows up. Yeah. <laughs> the poor man's meet Kevin. Oh, yeah, him. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Good times. You remember watching this video? The last portfolio update yeah and i think you were one of the people especially uh i was absolutely sauced after a night out in vegas <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one's a good one like i remember uh that time frame oh no it was it was a crazy time and i mean there was the roughly speaking there was so much even within the community as far as like fear goes uh surrounding meta yeah yeah it was absolutely incredible to watch and you know you always say people always say um you know there, there's i'm not going to be that guy when it happens and most people still are that guy so yeah yeah it, it's pretty fascinating um, now, all things considered, I guess now, Meta, the opportunity for sure, I think has has uh, not necessarily gone completely away, uh, but it, it's definitely changed. And something like Alphabet is presenting itself like a similar opportunity, some more similar to Amazon, which we'll discuss when we get to um, Amazon in a second, because a lot of the thesis surrounding Amazon as well uh, was formulated around where they were in the CapEx cycle. But Meta, for the most part, the juncture that we found ourselves at the end of 2022 was right when they were uh, announcing the uh, large CapEx spend or kind of closer to the, to, to the end than the beginning. Um, and again, people just didn't see what it would do for them long term. 
Um, and right now with an internal hyperscaler, they are able to mitigate or control their costs much better than something like a, like a, you know, Snapchat or TikTok per se. Okay. So, um, as always, if you guys have any questions, you can post them live in the chat and then we'll get to them as we can. You guys will guide the discussion. Uh, coincidence that Fabio retire soon after the SoFi 10X course from Tanner Investing. <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely paid for it. Yeah, that's true. And just so, just so it's like, um, I know that we've been joking for a long time that when this moment were to happen, uh, there would be retirement. Um, it's going to be like a soft retirement. Right now, I, I guess there is, um, in a sense, like, um, and I was talking to the community members. It, it is sort of surreal. And there was, how, how was I bacon? How would you uh, describe my emotional state? Restrained happiness. Restrained happiness? Would, okay, would you're you, being Would you say, no, 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 I, I think so. I think so. Because, like, generally speaking, you are a man who likes to be measured and controlled. Mm. Uh, especially when it comes to anything emotional. Um, at least that's my anecdotal observation. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, come on, like, you know, we're talking money here. Like ever since you entered to where it is now, like who wouldn't be happy, you know, seeing that percentage, the absolute numbers, you know, to where they are. Um, but you know, I'd say, I'd say you were still measured. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, oh, Dan, Dan. Dan, you got your beverage? <laughs> so I, I busted out the uh, Stark Game of Thrones cup because... Uh, hold on, just remembers. real quick. Math here does not add up because I would not be in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> kind of revealing oh, a little bit. No, come on. That. Poor man's meet Kevin is always over here when he's like that under the influence. Put, yeah, that wouldn't you know, put me in middle school. <laughs> yeah, for, for how Stark the North remembers, right, Fabio? North remembers. Exactly. King of the North. <laughs> The math. I brought out my twenty-year scotch for you. Yep. Congratulations right. on your victory, Dan. By the way. Oh, also to you, Dan, as well. Is it really that big of a victory? I think they did okay, but I, I would I would say relative to people trying to say a fintech company. <laughs> See, look, you were, you were being generous with how I was feeling. Everyone else is shouting me out. They're like, Fabio started shaking and crying. I didn't shake and cry, but like I was vividly excited. You could hear it in my voice. I did say when tractors apply one under 200, people should buy it. Yep. Not financial advice, but it's, <laughs> so be it. consider buying it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see tomorrow because for at least for Merrill, the prices for my broker won't add up. I mean, like the spreadsheet does um, allocate it. Well, it doesn't even take into account after hours. So never mind. But the brokerage data um won't come out till tomorrow even my returns data it's always one day behind because merrill uh won't count tomorrow's returns until saturday yeah. so that's that's another thing so probably ask me on saturday if you're in the club and i can share that with you uh, that's you know, when merrill's going to take that into account did you mention certain youtubers who are growth investing channels no we haven't we have, it. okay <laughs> but we can get into it absolutely to be a growth investor and be invested in five or six little tiny speculatives, most of them unprofitable companies, and not have exposure to large cap tech, which is a cash flow machine, is just criminal. Like, even me, a dividend investor, I have SCHG, I have six figures worth of SCHG. So I've done very well with it. So, you know, I didn't have to directly invest in Meta, um, yeah. which I wouldn't directly, but like, I don't know. To call yourself a, a growth investor and not have big cap tech of some shape or form yeah. somehow. These these channels that are like hoping on these very small speculative companies, I would say, to grow into these monsters that I don't understand where they're, they're looking. I don't know. You don't want to. I don't know what names you want to call. but No, no, you're, you're allowed to. I mean, again, because this is like, what's the point of being like quasi in, in a way like retired and relaxed then okay at this point i'm uncancelable there's not it's just really funny a lawyer that i care to impress like peter lynch was a growth investor to some right like yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. he he, he like these growth investor channels that are like hyper concentrated in like five or six positions it's like okay well you got to get the right ones you have to, if nvidia or uh facebook weren't part of that group or bitcoin maybe if you had it for five years you perform terribly most likely 
like a growth investor like Peter Lynch would have had thousands of holdings, you know, with the hope that some of them would do what Meta and NVIDIA did, because a lot of them would either go, you know, maybe bankrupt or just do kind of go flat. But I think there's just this misinterpretation of growth investing, which it, it's kind of good to see, like, this is growth investing, what you, you know, the Meta play, you know, that's the optimization of a growth investing strategy to some degree, which I know you're not, but um, yeah. It's just funny because this coincides with us making fun of certain SoFi investing channels as they just flounder <laughs> and lose money and do nothing in this amazing tech, tech uh, you know, climate. Well, it looks like I think we have the other new SoFi investor in here <laughs> that is weirdly obsessed with a tiny YouTube channel. Um, and Jeremy, so Jeremy, buying SoFi after it bumped 20% on earnings which i laughed the whole time <laughs> as yes. it went right back to where it was when it started like glorious you also i i have no idea selling how your courses i mean great. i look I, forward to the hedge funds <laughs> oh, yeah. i don't know how he did his math that, that 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 2013 would be middle school come on the guy like i said the guy always shows up while he's under the influence that's, that's who he is <laughs> yeah um but other than that, uh, I think big arc holding of Meta. How big is arc holding of Meta? Oh, yeah, that's right, Dan. How big is arc hold? Blah, 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 arcs holding of Meta. I don't think they have any, do they? No, no, no. Like you can oh, see, you can you see where growth, it. growth, oh. like in the past, growth investments was based on small companies that would like explode. Blah blah. blah. I think, I, like to, to me. The new the new growth investments are the big companies because the capex investment of AI and data centers is so cost prohibitive yeah. that it's changed the game. And I don't think if you if you do analysis like fifty years of of data, I think you're yeah. looking at the wrong data because I, I don't think there's a, there's I don't know like it's changed. I don't know how else to say it since 2010. Um, especially in it, it's like accelerating the difference that the bigger companies are the ones that are growing at accelerated rates, uh, not the smaller like value plays, let's say. But yeah. And just to just to uh, stick to Meta here for a second, some of the things that are quite fascinating, at least a change of pace, is of course the dividend. Um, yes. Right. We're thinking of these fast growing tech companies that just refuse to pay a dividend well except the top two companies in the world are also tech companies and they do pay a dividend apple and microsoft mm -hmm. uh and even nvidia pays a dividend but looking at meta now that pays a dividend my yield on cost is going to be roughly two ish percent uh at 50 cents a quarter so you know can't can't complain i i can see like why they've elected to, to do it i i prefer right now a dividend to a buyback and looking at the buybacks that they've executed they still have some firepower on their previous buyback they upped the buyback some more around 30 billion extra in in uh let's call it new approved uh capital for that buyback uh, but i would prefer them not to focus too hard on doing share repurchases here and doing a cash dividend i think is uh going to be a better use of return of capital to shareholders so uh, yeah. you know, Hey, uh, I'm in favor of it. Let's just say, um, but how are the things going or looking forward, uh, for meta? I think, uh, 2024 is going to be at least decently strong. I think ad spend is going to continue to kind of push forward and showing the growth that they've seen. I think it was like, uh, well and above of what alphabet was. Cause we already covered alphabet's earnings in the prior live stream. And some of the disappointments there was of course with ad spend um right now meta is kind of showing what, what are you talking about there, there's no issue with ad spend so uh, the joke is we've seen now where uh that ad spend potentially had gone into probably a more efficient platform um granted also concentrated platform in the likes of meta and amazon which we'll get to because amazon without getting too ahead of ourselves showed 20 percent over 20 percent growth in ad spend and there are three pillars that i pay attention to when it comes to amazon every quarter and ad spend is one of those pillars. So um, really fascinating to, to just see and uh, long time coming, let's just say. Uh, Meta now at 450, at 500, it will be officially a 5X for me. So yeah, in th that short period of time. So drink to that. 
oh, watch out for my my 5x course, of, of course, naturally. But I'm going to turn it into a 10x course because, you know. You'll have an intro 5x for, and you, it'll focus on your meta thesis, right? Yeah. But, yep. That yep. actually yes. work. You know, imagine selling a growth investing course that actually performs in the market. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yeah, sell yeah, it. Yeah. You should have sold it before the stock went up. That, that's the grift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, j just to comment one last thing on the, on the prior comment, because part of the question, not only was it making the, let's call it wrong calculation on just through what uh, period of my academic career I was in. Um, the also point of like, uh, who is the grifter now? I mean, the, it, I think it's clear cut and dry who makes money from YouTube. Right. And who doesn't, who makes money from primarily their investments. Um, again, like the club members see the capital that I contribute. It's definitely not YouTube. Definitely not YouTube. It's impossible for it to be YouTube. So, um, YouTube course money. There is no course money. I don't sell a course. Um, I have club dues that go back into seeing what value we can provide for the club members. And, uh, yeah, there's there's no even comparison. I would you say. say that you did recently a creative M and A? Well, a creative M and A. We could call that other club merger. Yes, a creative M and A. Or <laughs> or is, is does Jake make it dilutive? I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, we got so that merger of the two clubs. That was like yeah. a fantastic value add. I think we got so many valuable club members. Jake, you in the comments and many others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that. Wow, I can't, I can't believe because that's what Capital Mindset is becoming. It's, it's a true club. I don't want it to become a cult personality. Even though I come on here and I talk and I'm like the talking head, uh, very much so. There's, I mean, you guys are testaments to it. You guys are club members. Um, I'm not the, let's call it, only personality that's, you know, kind of risen through it. I might be the person who originally brought everyone together, but you guys are flourishing all on your own. Um, and so that's another a drink to that, to a true sense of camaraderie and, you know, a true club, investing club. But, um, yeah, for the most part, what we're seeing now with the development of Meta, um, I will say that. Um, uh oh. Uh, da, 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 da. More drinks for me. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding, right? Can we? <laughs> yeah i enjoyed so when i when i did my uh make fun of meet kevin for short in costco mm -hmm. and then my, my cat came in the room so i had to like push him out before he like, i wish I, the table. I wish i could have shown you the comment this guy left me when i when i did the video on meet kevin short in costco it was like he, he swore every other word so i couldn't flip yeah. it through he called me a clown for my thesis which i didn't know i was really pitching costco i was just explaining how stupid it is the short costco <laughs> and then here it is it's up another 10 or something percent percent it keeps, since he did that. It keeps drifting up yeah I, I keep these people like you shorting on valuation is sheer idiocy yeah. to the 10th degree and i have two we have two examples right now of two idiot youtubers shorting on valuation and i'll drink to that because i enjoy that yeah. but. Oh, oh, congratulations. You got a thing. Got a thing. Mm, got a thing. Yes, we have to. Let's cover it. Let, let me just, let me also just like put my cat a little bit further out because he's scratching the door and just don't want to. I'm going to give him some food. Be right back. No, it's weird because behind the scenes, Fabio recently had dinner and fed the cats. So those gatos, they are relentless. Oh, this thing. Okay. The S, -Vol. S -Vol. Yeah. I know about S Vol. Yep. I, I might do a video on it at some point. The um <laughs> the guy I interviewed, um, the, the yeah. guy from Seeking Alpha, yep. he actually uh has written an article on S Vol and I talked to him behind the scenes. He he he, he likes it, but he's a trader. Mm -hmm. He's it's not like yeah. a long term. Yeah. Uh he said it it's it's just his word, I'm gonna butcher what he said, but he's basically like it's easier to understand because you're not dealing with a company. Mm -hmm. So you're not dealing with income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, stuff like that, future projections. It's, you know, it's an investment based on a metric almost. Um, so he was trading it. 
Yes. As far as I knew. But all right, I'm back. Remember the other day when I sent the picture of you guys when uh I got home to the office and he just like jumps on my desk? He's literally <laughs> like that. He's like, you have to give me attention before you give anything else attention. Can you pull up the VIX, Fabio? <laughs> the what? The, the VIX. VIX. Yeah. On it, sir. Yes, sir. Because he saw my ass full. So yeah. So this is a trap I think people are gonna fall into. Yeah. So S full makes bets on the VIX um going down. Mm -hmm. So a downward VIX is beneficial to S full. So in the yep. last like year, S full has done great. If you looked at sheer, if you just look at the total return, the performance of S full, it looks great. Okay. But it only will perform in a certain type of climate, which happened in the last year. So will that continue? I I don't know how you think it it it, it it was a perfect climate for SVOL last year with the with the VIX dropping the whole time, basically. Yeah. Um, so you would lead to the conclusion that it's probably not going to do that long term. And VIX is going to inevitably go up at some point. And you're going to be buying it at the top then is is the concern you would have. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my only addition would be uh, just like macro and geopolitics. Uh be careful of people who uh, have too strong of opinions on uh, vol. <laughs> and, well, Fabio, missed, so the guy I interviewed from Seeking Alpha, he was yeah. trading S full. I talked mm -hmm. to him by, behind the scenes about it. Yeah. Um, for a little bit, he found it interesting, but yeah, yeah he like, was trading S full. He was trading. It wasn't holding it long term. Yeah, there are well, there are professional cool. traders, though. Like you know, of course yeah. that that do you know do this. It's just like usually, like whenever popular people say, "Hey." Vix go up, Vix go down. Uh, they oftentimes get trolled and laughed at. Oh, there's another one. So, so where do you think volatility is going to be this year? This is just a fun question. That's there's no, you know. Uh, Wait, how do you calculate it again? Can you? Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to look I forget up. the calculation because, like, I use it's one of those things where, like, I remember and then forget and then, like, you know, re remember. As an accountant, you just need to know where to find shit. Yeah, I don't memorize everything, so. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's there. It's a thing. Let me refresh myself. Yeah. Uh, this is also true from Lou Gator, by the way. Just like <laughs> <laughs> this is super true, because yeah, at, at the end of the day, you know, I'm oh, a fair yeah. game. Yeah. The yeah. rule usually is like don't be, you know don't bully each other, but like and everyone's adults. No one really bullies each other. Yeah. yeah no one weird. threatens each other physically or anything like that. Exactly. Okay, so so it would imply that there would be more options activity, I guess, by the weighted price of the SP five hundred. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, lowering interest rates would be the question. If that happens, would that also affect the VIX in a certain way? I don't. I say above my pay grade. You know, like there's there is. It's not something I've ever really. I've never really put much thought. I'm not against it. I just haven't really thought about it much. Yeah, some golden dumb hells, but also a good way to get your face ripped off if you don't know. I I was hoping just on a kind of like hope basis, I was hoping we we see some increased volatility this year. Uh, um, I don't want well actually 2023, we did experience a little bit of a sell-off in October. I, I call it like a little bit because it technically wasn't. It's just like let's call it a breather moment. Mm -hmm. So from summer all the way till October. Uh, we experienced a little bit of a cooling off period. And and then before the, let's call it, you know, a bacon, Santa Claus rally. Because um, uh. <laughs> it, it did basically happen. And we're, we're going to get to that when we get to Amazon, because Amazon blew it out of the water in terms of Q4 figures. Yeah. Uh, but so did Meta. If I pull up Meta's presentation, I can show you guys here uh, what it ended up looking like. Let me put us over here to the side. That way we don't block a comment when it comes up. But effectively, you, know, you can basically see what happened here. So Q4 of 2023 versus Q4 of 2022, it even beat Q4 of 2021, which if you go back and watch the older videos, I stated that the Q4 figures, you had to almost ignore because of tough comparisons, the so tough comps. Mm -hmm. So you had tough comps in 2022, and now 2023 comes around and shows a reacceleration of growth, which is actually boosting, uh, let's call it the the... the prior narrative it's gone it's over um all of the prior uh headaches that meta had to deal with they're not front of page uh right now 
is definitely now the time to kind of just let this winter ride and uh, take advantage that all of the prior bumps on the road, they're no longer in front of you. And probably we're going to see a bit of a rally from here on. Um, we're going to see some maybe inclusion and in dividend ETFs, uh, but we'll see. I don't want to actually speculate and put that as part of the thesis. Um, so really everything that we laid out as far as the thesis goes for Meta ended up playing out the valuation again, phenomenal. Um, the only reason why I didn't even continue to add to this winner, while arguably that would have been a great move was because of the allocation being so heavy to begin with. And it would have been frankly, a little bit irresponsible, but it's okay. Cause we found other opportunities. Um, we also at the time added Salesforce around the same time that I added Meta a little bit later, roughly December of 2022. And that one's done well, just not as well as Meta, um, but still happy with it overall. And, you know, we've had some winners in 2023, some unlikely ones. We we made money in, in Murphy's USA, which the only public available uh, pitch that I have for you is actually uh, hosted by Everything Money. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. No, not Everything Money. Chit Chat Money, who changed their name because I was trying to forget their name. Chit Chat Money. And now they're called Chit Chat Stocks. You know, ah. Sam already got that. It's too late. <laughs> Yeah, Sam's already got it. It's it's over. It's done. Drink more. <laughs> Pour one out, actually. Yeah, Drink more. <laughs> if anybody wants to update, uh, Paul's estimated to be down at least eight point six million so Ooh. on his Nvidia short. That's that's Jesse's minimum calculation. <laughs> it just keeps drifting up on the losses. It's going to be ten million soon. I'm telling you, like. Oh, Mike, Michael Anthony, these charts are all from Meta's investor presentation. Yeah. For, for your question. Now, this question, this uh, next chart is actually showcasing a large part of the other portion of the thesis that they'll eventually get costs under control. And that's exactly what happens. So we see expenses as a percentage of revenue. So we saw both revenue expanding and frankly, costs were maintained and if not going down a little bit. So it's reached that optimal point where every marginal amount of expenditure isn't drawing that much more value. And of course, the managers at Meta saw that and didn't just keep on burning more money. Uh, because again, the marginal increase in dollar spend and CapEx didn't actually drive that much benefit as to their determination. That's what we can assume. Similar to the Netflix thesis, if you guys go back in 2022 of Q2 or Q1, when I posted the very long meta, uh, not meta, Netflix video, uh, that again, I think is still pertinent to this day. I actually recently saw a, another pitch on YouTube for Netflix. And I was like, oh, this is a lot of the same points. That I have in this video that's really old when Netflix was like 180 bucks a share. Um, the the same narrative was kind of showing around then that Netflix at some point will reach some efficiency standpoint where they'll plateau the investment in new shows. And you'll have at that point every incremental subscriber just being pure profit for the company. Because the economics of Netflix are actually really fascinating. And one of the things that drew me to that investment, uh, something that Disney could replicate if they just freaking got their act together. Uh, but they they just don't want to make money. And so Disney's just going to be an inferior business to Netflix. And it is what it is. But they could choose not to be. They just don't want to be. So, you know, the the the, the CapEx and the Epcot is started already. No, nope, they're yep. taking on sphere Major renovations of also some of the villa areas. Um, my friend has gets the emails from Dis like updates. He's a the point thing, uh, Disney points and. I mean, they are doing it that part. So, but I am, I'm three dollars from selling it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I'm gonna think when it gets to a hundred, I'll think about it. I I pulled the that's plug like, on it. Really. What's that like? Twenty percent? Yeah, I I, I had other ideas that uh, seemed appealing at the time and still do. <laughs> Tattoo surf, surf, innovation at its finest. Innovation this is another time. thing I want to bring up about SoFi. What do you think, Fabio? Because we remember, are you done with Meta or you want to keep going? No, no, no. We, we're jumping back and forth. This is a okay. both informative victory stream lap. and a chill stream victory lap. Yes, it's all so, of these so things. Fun do, you remember, do you remember Tattooed Chef before they went bankrupt, like pretty close to before it, they started mm -hmm. expanding the SKUs all of a sudden? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So at first it was like 
targeted to specific products like the Buddha bowl and maybe a few mm -hmm. others. They were like kind of targeted. And then all of a sudden they start expanding all these other, like the bars and all this other shit. And then they went bankrupt. I look at SoFi and I'm like, they barely are scratching profitability. And like, I swear every week they are offering a new product or talking about a new, uh, you know, investment idea, like getting into ETFs and mutual funds or do you know, they sell, uh, they have a car rental service, a, a travel service. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like looking at this. I'm like, they barely scratch profitability and they're just like all these skews, right? Yep. It's kind of odd. Yeah. And again, I'm suspect of how their products are going to really scale. Um, well, not scale, but how they're really going to deliver growth and get a lot of new customers because a lot of their customer base is their own competition. So I keep bringing up that point. We'll see how that happens if we end up doing another victory lap on that point, because it's just, it isn't a little bit of an uphill battle. You really do have to have such a better, more compelling product than uh, competitive offerings in order for yeah. you to convince someone that, hey, you have to use me. Do they talk about total users or total active users? I don't remember. But because how many people just sign in just because they're curious or they had a promotional code to get like $100 or $10 free? And then they realize they can't stand it and then they bail on it. Look, but then just, they keep your account open, right? You don't close your account. You just take your money out and then you go somewhere else. But you still exist in that in that company. So here, since we're talking about SoFi technology, we'll take a brief pause from, from Meta and then we'll go to the earnings presentation for SoFi technologies. Because um, uh, one thing I will say. Uh, Are they going to pull a uh, Wells Fargo and give a... Uh create extra accounts <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking and there's no way there's no way that they would put that no there. so if you actually do some rough estimation of what the division between memberships let's call it you know accounts uh and by the way uh just just a quick shout out because my birdies the, the word did reach me that um a certain individual called the people who have accounts as they that they are the uh um, customers um yes and no depending on how you are as a bank you're not viewing them they're they're just depositors um really who you're dealing with is people who borrow from you and those are actually the people who are you're lending a product to and then you're providing a service you're selling the money depositors who just deposit aren't necessarily as such but people who have capital at sofi if you do a rough estimation as to how much uh, the average uh, let's call it deposit account is valued at, it doesn't come out to a very surprising or meaningful number uh, on an average basis. Uh, unlike some of the other larger banks that um, have a much more established, let's call it middle income uh, and upper middle income class stranglehold, like Bank of America, that I think has a rough estimate of around 17,000, give or take uh, somewhere within that range. I think SoFi's comes up into like the, the low thousands. Uh, so it doesn't really draw me into the narrative that you have a lot of Henry's in here, even though that's a huge part of, of the thesis that Henry's are, are here uh, again, because there's a lot of things that make me question it. I think SoFi is a great beginner bank. There's a lot of things here that you say, if you're just getting started in your financial journey, SoFi offers a lot of value for that person. As soon as you have to, any serious amount of money, I think that there are other banks that provide even more value than what SoFi does, because now you are, uh, let's say entering a different, uh, stage of your life. And, um, you know, if, if you're just looking at it, like you're just getting started, you know, SoFi is great because they don't have any fees, et cetera. And, um, there's a lot of little things you can do. Credit cards, pretty subpar. If you're really talking about credit card game benefits are pretty subpar. Um, ex do an extra victory lap for you, stone cold investors. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> now I think you're hitting it. What my concern part of mine too, is this like, this was the same issue with Robin hood. They yeah. weren't Robin Hood. I know for a fact from like when they IPO to like a year and a half later, yeah. they, they had not grown their per customer dollar amount, like, yeah, at, like maybe by like 2%. So I'm like, people, people are like, they're either not, you know, as they get more affluent in their life and do better, they are leaving, right? Yeah. Because they want a more full service experience. And these companies cannot provide that. They just can't. They're, they're too small. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think SoFi is the same thing. It's like I, I like I could get better deals that I deal with two banks primarily, you know, Schwab and USA. And it's not even about the rates, it's about the customer service. I, I have a special number to call if I want to get hold of somebody. Um, that sounds really terrible. <laughs> so, 
there's like preference and you feel like they care they say thank you and I, you know i i don't have to get on hold my emails are responded to like i, I don't want to deal with this these startup companies i don't care about the 0.5 better interest rate it's insignificant at this point um yeah so because you could like someone like me i want more than what robin and so will offer me it's not good enough um and that's what like Fabio, i think that's what's going to happen you're going to start there and then you're going to end up at JP Morgan or Schwab or, you know, something like that of more full service experience because it will matter to you. You don't think it matters when you're 22, 23, when you got a few grand. This stuff will matter when you're like 40. Yes. Because um, yeah, your time totally. is more important as you get older. These yeah. companies save you time and they give you better perks for you being a customer of them that you appreciate. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And again, there is there is room for SoFi to, to change this, but like you, you, you can't just say it. You got to do it. If you make it compelling as a product that I get more benefits, the more money I have with you, then yeah, OK, I'll, I'll you know, that's something I can contemplate. But right now I see zero reason for me to have anything beyond just like kind of a, a tester account with SoFi. Um, like, like so robin hood offered that one percent if you transferred was it your roth over to them yes yes would you do that fabio if but but i think it came with a three-year lockup i believe yeah yeah so would you um, would you give up your choices for three years for one percent is it unlimited amount i think uh, i don't know because um, if, if it's if it's unlimited i would consider it because but i think they had a you had to stay with them for a certain amount of time or you forfeited the the bonus thing they offer. I would be willing to do that because three years goes by pretty quickly. I mean, three years for capital mindset now, me being public on YouTube as far as investing goes, that's it's already been three years. Crazy to think about it, mm. but mm -hmm. it's been three years. Uh, we're or we're going on the third year right now. So it's 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 a quick amount of time. If it's three, five, even though five, five is a little bit feels like a little bit more time for me. <laughs> yeah. But if if you're giving me unlimited one percent, okay, Lincoln had it. it. What Lincoln is it? One point five. One point five. Okay, just just to be very clear, my my Roth is not gonna. Okay, that's fine. So I wouldn't fall. I hope I wish, but the the Roth is not gonna fall in that. So um, you're a faller if you got that in a Roth. Damn. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're Peter Thiel at that point. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the goal is to get like, well, not just Peter Thiel, but you know, hey, you had um um. Peter Lynch, sorry, Peter wow. Lynch. Who, he got his wife's to like, I guess, a hundred, a couple hundred million. Ooh, god damn! I'm not there, but we'll we'll get to that. It wasn't necessarily that in and of itself. It's like an exciting business next to something like Microsoft. It was the value proposition at the time it was trading at. Yes. And right now, one of the things that is, I guess, more or less exciting investors about Meta is how much capital or how much income they're able to produce from those assets. And digital ads is still something that's still, believe it or not, it's still a growing industry because so much advertisement is spent inefficiently in traditional forms of advertising that there is still room to run. And we have people who are members of the community that they have uh, digital ads businesses. I think you remember who I'm talking about. Uh, he gave us a whole spiel, basically breakdown of the industry. On top of the fact that we have, of course, our other analyst, Andrew, who um, is very familiar with the ad space. Uh, but just talking to some people who work in the space, there's still so much momentum and movement in that direction. And a lot of the legacy forms of advertising still have a strong grip on things. Uh, but yeah, let's finish the commentary on SoFi. So I think that, um, you know, the, the recent rally is quite unfortunate. I'm being polite um, uh, that it, it's gone away. Um, but you know, you guys got to gap profitability and I think now you still have to, cause the remaining problem kind of ensues. Cause like many banks are gap profitable, but not all banks are created equal. Equal. Yeah. Um, so I have investment in one bank at the moment and I can't say that SoFi gets anywhere near close to the quality of that bank. SoFi is dominating in two key lending categories, and that is personal loans and student loans. And uh, in the personal loan space, that is not really the space that I'd say is the safest, let's call it, uh, arena to play with. Um, student loans is a little bit different. 
uh, you know, you have like Nelnet, right? Nelnet's yep. one. Uh, Nelnet's not really a bank, but they're a holder and, and uh, accumulator of student loans. They're not like a bank per se that we kind of think of that, you know, you get accounts. I, can you get an account, a savings account with Nelnet? I don't mm, think so. Not off the top of my head. And then you have Discover, which is another big player in student loans. But anyways, it's not really a bank that, uh, judging it as a bank, that really excites me. But it has this strange retail attention, and I can't really get my head around it when there's so many other compelling opportunities out there. I I, I don't know what else to say about it. The I'll obsession with first. fintech, I just I've never understood. You could like large cap tech, amazing cybersecurity, amazing opportunity, semis and fabrication of, of chips, um, int very interesting. Like fintech, like what the what the fuck are you guys doing? I don't get it. I just swear to God, it's a bank. Like, there's some, it, there's some of the worst performing assets in America are banks. Could um, it be? Uh, you might as well like, go buy utilities. Wait, your name, your name, fintech boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's come a on, good dude. name. It's a good name. <laughs> what <are> you <laughs> <Fintech doing>? boy? <laughs> but they they don't. I think they don't appreciate. Like they're all projecting it's going to inevitably become a hundred billion dollar replacement for J.P. Morgan, something like that. I'm like, what they're doing with, I, I keep saying, it's not about the members. I, to me, it's not about the members they're growing. It's not about that, uh, you know, the new businesses they're starting. It's about what they're doing with deposits. You know, what? how are they making interest income? Yeah. People need to pay attention to what they're yeah. doing with those deposits and not the members coming in. And these YouTube channels don't under. I don't think they understand. They're, you know, there's a potential so if I can do well. But there's also a risk adjusted concern. It can go really bad, really bad, like what they're doing. Um, and I don't think they appreciate that. And th th which means people on Wall Street, look what happened. Okay, it did great on earnings, but then, you know, any little news or whatever cause it to lose the, all that 20%. Um, there's something there. Um, so I hate that it's going to crush a lot of retail people. It's going to get crushed by this thing. Um, Irony, because uh, I, I had an opportunity to uh, interact with a uh, CEO of a consulting company, and uh, I asked him uh, what are the best and worst KPIs, and his his he went meta on me for worst KPI, and that was the list and number of KPIs, and uh, how many KPIs does SoFi have, or like tries to mention like do people <laughs> so with their personal loan book loan book. Yeah. We haven't even gone through bad times with so far oh, yeah. with a public company yep. yet. Yep. It has not existed in bad times. Like with that loan book. My God. Yeah. You ain't seen nothing yet, people. Yeah. Because if you want to flee to safety, okay, people will flee to safety. You look what happens to SoFi. <laughs> you ain't see you haven't seen a bad time and the stock already is what it is right now. You know, like seven dollars. Like it's frustrating. All the YouTubers that you look at online are holding bags. They bought it at twelve, fifteen dollars. You know whether they admit it or not. That's that's just where they were buying Ooh. it. Well, heavy yeah. bags, people. So all the tech boom we've had in the last since like the last year, they haven't you know, nothing. Don't let them tell you they bought it at four dollars. Yes, that's yeah. a load of shit. They well, actually, not, they could have bought a little at four, but they were buying before then. Ask, Go look at ask their days for their videos. Asked to see because the thing is they don't provide at least like a timestamp where where you know they do you don't have to show your dollar figure right uh, because some some uh let's call it finfluencers I hate that term but some <laughs> influencers will hide behind that they'll hide behind the veil of privacy for dollar figures and that's probably a little bit um, let's call it disingenuous because they could say okay well but I will show you over a period of time and it's updated periodically through percentage allocation. There's plenty of people that even in their private groups, as far as I'm aware, they still don't show the dollar figures such as, and you know, I commend them for it that they're showing at least percentage because you can at least follow that. And you have uh, a period of time that you can go back in time and watch the older stuff and kind of follow their journey along and still get a good idea of how their investing has been. Um, and that is, uh, he's a big channel. Um, Oh, uh, gosh. What, what's his name? Um, he was on Everything Money. 
You guys Sad. know him? Oh, no, 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 no. He was like he was featured on everything money. Like he he did a. You know who I'm talking oh, about? Um, um, the the valuation guy. Yes, that guy. The valuation now. No, 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 not him, not him. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a YouTuber. I, I can't remember oh, his name yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember his name either. But he is a big Jimmy, follower. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy from Learn to yeah, yeah. So Jimmy from Learn to Invest, even yeah. within his private group, he doesn't show dollar figures, but he always shows, you know, like a portfolio update with percentages. A lot of these newer, let's call them neo. You want to call them neo grifters? Uh, neo grifters, they don't show that and they hide under the veil of like privacy. Um, so you, they can always be extremely vague as to what their allocations are, what their cost basis are, uh, because you don't have like timestamps as far as as an individual over a period of time, what they were invested in and the allocation. So you have no idea what's really going on. And that's on purpose. That's to be vague and, and mundane. And if you actually ask them for it, they get a little bit defensive. So I implore everyone, you know, if you're listening to those people, you can say, hey, what, what's your cost basis? And then um, they don't have to show you how much they have invested in it. That's not your question, right? Uh, you can ask, show, can you show me the cost basis? Uh, you know, like a little screenshot from the broker. That, that would be fair enough because they don't have to show you. I have, uh, oh, I have a, a thousand, 10,000. Know, that's all private. Don't worry. I don't want that. Show me the average cost broken down by the broker. You know, that's all they need to do. Uh, but they won't do that. <laughs> Show me the or car facts. If they do that, if they do that, then, uh, you know, I would respect it a lot more, right? That you can be like wrong and stuff, but I respect it tons more. Like I, re I respect Jimmy from Learn to Invest because he does that. He shows you like, he, he doesn't show you for the brokerage, but he shows you at least like, oh, I have this percentage in this company at this cost basis. When he does an update, he's like, I have this percentage of this bit. And then you can kind of see how the stocks have performed. And then, you know, you can say, oh, well, you had like 20% in Disney and Disney did terribly. You, you did terribly. That was a bad investment. Um, so you have an, at least an awareness, at least with these guys, you're not even seeing that. So it's, it's extremely vague and it's done so on purpose so that they can sell like a 10x course. That's the whole point. <clears throat> um, all right, so let's see. Uh, we have questions. But yeah, that's pretty much the summary of SoFi Technologies. If you guys have any uh, other additional thoughts, I like this comment here from FinTech Boy because I think it addresses the crux of the issue. Yep. Customer acquisition. Yeah. yeah. And customer retention too. Because mm -hmm. you know, if you're a startup and or you're a small younger company and you finally land a big fish, but that big fish late leaves like two or three years in, oof! Like I hope you've been getting other customers. Yeah, <laughs> that's not so far specific. That's just in general. Um, to clarify. Yeah. Okay, so going back to the um, that that would be actually impossible with the uh tattooed chef loss technically but <laughs> people people i know there's gotta be Jeremy people there's no way his returns are what he says they are after he lost um over a million dollars on tattooed chef i mean from an accounting perspective there's no if, possible way he, he could get the returns he's showing you like if if he had those losses as cost of goods sold for his youtube ventures <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking around this is crazy like and then he lost a quarter mil on voyager and uh so strongman's got all the video clips oh yeah yeah so yeah strongman's probably a better documentation of oh yeah that. he's got yeah. videos many videos covering this so i think there was I, don't also do jeremy, I don't do jeremy content because that's that's his i do meet kevin and um fucking no, everything money no well, I, think... I, well, I did one I was never going to do a tan. If you don't sell a course or software, yeah. like I, but I'm, it's just your opinion. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. But um, no, yeah. Game on. Game I, on. Run it, I don't care. You run a, run a $10 a month, $20 a month Patreon. That's fine. It's just a club. But um, mm -hmm. just when you cross the line to being, I am an investment guru, right? Oh, yeah. that's so cringe. I, like a cringe term. To yeah. Say. Cause I mean, if you're doing a course, you are saying you have some super value to prove that you can outperform, that you're going to sell to the public. You're okay. Yeah. It's, well, 
I think no one beats Paul from Everything Money right now. <laughs> no. I think everyone's Paul, minor league grifter compared to Paul. Yeah. I think Paul Paul takes the cake. Paul has defeated all of them. Right. <laughs> so if you're if if you're one of those people and you're watching, do not worry. You are not as bad as Paul. Paul is the by worst. default. By default. Paul is officially the worst. <laughs> um, I mean, because we're we're I mean, what's his loss? Conservatively, ten and change. Ten and change now. Wow. I think it was, like, it was, ten ten earlier. Jesse's tracker's got eight point six as the oh, minimum. Okay. Yeah. All right, minimum. All right. Because I think he did two million with at the money strike last uh, spring, which is when we think he did it. So, yeah. yeah, a couple million could be six million. So, yeah, that that would be uh, hard to top. From all the other people just simply because they don't have as much money um yeah so he has a lot of money but he doesn't have a lot of brain cells um and a ton of confidence he has like a ton of confidence so he is mm -hmm. what happens when you mix a lot of money not much intelligence and like just turn to 11 confidence and that's that's paul i'm just um, glad that that he screwed up how to value a bond and left the video up there as it was for enough people to document it because valuing a bond, like for those that don't know, it's like finance one hundred and one practically. Very elementary. Yeah. Someone, someone put a comment that you can change your cost basis. I'm like, well, Paul literally has lied twice yes. now. We we have proven, yeah. strong man in us, he lied about Baba and he lied about Intel. I mean, it you can just prove it. Like I proved the Intel one. He literally had it in portfolios two years ago Intel, mm -hmm. which it was trading at fifty sixty dollars. He comes out of the video saying that he had a cost basis of $35 all of a sudden. Hey, he's another Where the one. hell did that come from? Out of the, out of nowhere. He's he's another one. Even if you're part of the group EM and you're a paying member, you don't get to see his allocation. No. Last I saw no. I was and, and and it's laughable if he argues the fact what I suspect is if it is a legal reason it's because it's not his money, it's the you know family's, family's money. And so that's why he's not able. That's my only suspicion. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty laughable that you don't get to see anything. And he can basically over time just kind of change around what he's allocated to it can be extremely vague and you have no idea. And then that's all part of the charade that he provides, at yeah. least the stuff that we do know that he can't back out. It's funny how bad of an investor he is, that even the things that he can't really back out for it. It's like those are really bad. <laughs> I, I just love business. that. So. that he uh he's done all of this and like to like i imagine his counter to us would be like well i sold cash secure puts and i sold covered calls so that reduces my cost basis in which case my counter to that would be you screwed up how to value bonds i'm not sure you even like deducted taxes from those yeah <laughs> going back to meta real quick so yeah yeah just to wrap up meta um some of the other things this is some this is an annualized view that's on their presentation on capital expenditures again you, you're seeing the the story still play out basically they've kind of reached uh, at some point the let's call it um terminal amount of capex necessary for them to now grow their hyperscaler and maintain mm -hmm. it and then throughout 2023 they officially became the largest owner of NVIDIA graphics cards uh, for their servers. And so what is interesting, and this is something I'd rather love to have Jesse on and discuss it further, is the potential that we might have uh, maybe miscalculated for some of these other company opportunities as far as uh, how much investment there's still yet to be had in the ai space and it's not the ones that you might think that's what is bad about let's call it these cult retail stocks that they're kind of missing the forest for the trees and they're investing in sometimes the more noisy assets uh, rather than the ones that are actually moving and changing the world there's a plenty of noise and that's something that you'll see across your investing journey when i first started investing uh, there was probably less noise but i think with the involvement of youtube and if I was starting investing now and I was fresh, new to investing, what I think is unfortunate is you have a ton of that noise in existence. And I'm not I'm not saying that um, I, I'm the best source of content by any stretch of the imagination. I'm probably actually closer to the bottom, hopefully. Um, if I am closer to the top, that's very bad. That means that things are really bad. But um, if 
if you really look out there in the universe of available content, I know I'm not entertaining and I'm never meant to be entertaining. And if you're getting into investing and you're looking for entertainment, stop investing. Um, go to an index fund, put it in there. And that's where you belong because you're going to get really hurt. Um, entertainment is for entertainment. This is a different place. I'm offering you just a place to hear some guy's opinion on the internet. Um, it to be completely dismissed and thrown into the wind. But there's a lot out there that, you know, again, the existence of this YouTube channel because of, you know, thankfully Austin who enforced it basically um, is because there was just such a massive amount of, let's call it terrifying information. And even now there's still existing new content creators are coming online that some of them are, you know, just sharing their opinions on others. Neo grifters have malicious intent. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. And there's never, there's seemingly a never ending uh, inflow of new potential people to fall prey uh, to those individuals. And something that Strongman has taken the the black pill basically for in YouTube finance, that it just is what it is. And it's always been this way and always will be. So uh, anyways. It's, so, it's funny though, since like, co like oh, don't don't say it. The clown yeah, market. Handy, handy, Wendy. <laughs> since the clown market, it's like there were a lot of investors that we saw that had this iron proof, you know, amazing strategy is going to beat the market that worked during that one year and a half period. But then all of a sudden they didn't adapt to the recognition that that time was over, you know, at the end of 2021. And we saw a lot of those YouTubers like get screwed and flat out delete their channels or disappear. <laughs> so yep. oh, the, yeah. the, 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 just like you think you have like the market solved, like you don't, you have to be a little flexible. Like I'm, I'm, I used to be hardcore, like really hardcore dividend investor. I've now ch like changed my methodology a bit. Um, as far as like my application of growth, I have more growth in there um, in different ways. Like I'll never be one to buy Facebook or CrowdStrike, but I've adapted what you guys have done to my own. Um, yeah. And the ETFs have done great. So yeah. you don't have to totally copy someone, but you can adapt what they're telling you to what works for you. Um, yeah. Because you got to live with it. Like I, I wasn't willing to live with the risk of buying something like, um, like Meta. At, at that point, you know, it, it did look pretty bad, but I'm like, but I don't mind it being part of a large cap growth ETF where I, I believe in it. That, that that's fine. I get that exposure or CrowdStrike. I, like I believe in cybersecurity. Just, I didn't really want to take the risk of CrowdStrike, right? Which is pretty volatile stock. It can go from 300 to a hundred. Um, but you know, get, you know, get your gains out of it a different way a little bit that, that oh, you yeah. can live with. Cause you got to live with it. I mean, yeah. A lot of people just sell stuff and, or they get bored or, what not? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the, the good thing is that as you've kind of interacted with people and uh, that's what I like about the community. It's like it has also kind of reshaped how I view certain industries because that's that's the whole point is like we're building like a, a, a melting pot of individuals, mm -hmm. different backgrounds. Some people have far more experienced backgrounds than myself, like insanely more. And, you know, they bring their ideas to the table. And some people are highly specialized or hyper specialized in uh, certain industries. Right. Um, so looking at, for example, um, like I won't well, actually I can't name names, but certain semiconductor engineers, certain oh, yeah. uh, biomechanical engineers, certain uh, physicians. Right. All of these people bring in their expertise. Uh, pharmacologists who specialize in clinical research, right? So all these people just come in together and they're really like a fountain of information that you can kind of work with them on different investment ideas that kind of benefit the two of you if you kind of bring information and together you build a proper thesis. So, and then that also opens up your, your mind potentially to other forms of investing that previously you kind of didn't like or appreciate as much, but then you kind of say, oh, I'm kind of, you know, warming up to this style of investing, uh, such as, you know, going from strictly dividends to kind of mixing and melding, like you said, some growth elements to it. Um, so this is a funny comment. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's the goal. Infinite. The goal is to have a big tax loss harvest. That's how you make money. Everyone's so, yeah, well, I'm not going to pay tax. I'm like, how about the goal is to pay some taxes and not the goal is to the pay government back. pay you back your losses? <laughs> <laughs> a 
lots of tax loss harvest talk online. That's I think usually the 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 saying now because it's unfortunate because I have done tax loss harvesting, but now it's become like a joke. If I say I'm selling this so I can tax loss harvest, <laughs> that's like a meme. It's like whoa, 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 <laughs> come down. These other things I have, they're doing well. It's just I want to lower the tax bill because the idea is you have some gains. It's like you're selectively taking some losses. All right, but finishing up uh, Meta because then we're going to go into uh, Amazon, Amazon is family, family daily active people DAP. Um, I feel like they used to call them users, daily active users. Now they call them daily active people. Did, am I the only one who knows that? Or is this kind of like the, uh, uh, what's it called? The Bernstein effect? <laughs> uh, my, my guess is like users may imply that uh, non-human beings, non-human eyeballs or non-human paychecks. <laughs> yeah. That's my guess. I don't know. So, so this is the crazy part. This is something that always kind of just shocks me at some point and we have some youtubers out there like i think i'll shout out sven carlin who says that meta is making up the numbers don't know uh but from this figure here as far as how they're reporting it if it's fake or not it's a different question it seems that there is continuing to be a growing amount of people getting access to the internet and connecting to each other via uh, platforms like meta through whatsapp instagram facebook etc uh we do have a uh, super chat what's up qqq slash spgp and vt is for losers oh so all three are for losers uh or just the two are good and vt is for losers which one's the or fabio all doesn't have a move see strongman roars i dab so what is fabio going to do for super chats just alcoholism <laughs> <laughs> are you even that answer is he's retired you don't give a shit yeah. <laughs> vt is for losers okay okay Thank all you right clarify. we got clarity yep you know what i love about strongman because i wasn't the biggest fan because he bashes dividend investors but like strongman is like a freaking blunt instrument online like if your investing thesis can't withstand strongman clubbing you over the head like you probably aren't in the right game, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like it's just funny, and he is—he's not right or wrong. It—it's it, but it is a way to get to retirement, like mm -hmm. in a way that makes sense for like one investment, right? Um. Yeah. No. No. It. His methodology will be reliant on the savings rate. And that's something I'll, I'll discuss briefly um, mm -hmm. just on indexes in general. If you are strategizing your investment based off of a certain return rate, you're doing it wrong. Uh, you should definitely not do that. And I think Strongman did have a video on this. I had this topic in one of the private streams when we were talking about the guy, I will teach you to be rich. And oh, the fallacy, we're Yes, the fallacy where he uses a, like um, a, an arbitrage approach to saying if you just invest in the index, you'll retire, blah, 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 blah. I think that's very problematic in any regard. So the main focus should be savings rate. And if you're applying the index investing approach, um, it's it's really comes down <laughs> to that. He just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, um, it really just comes down to that. So he, you did have a video on this, strongman, and that's what I'm highlighting from that point. Um, if you say I'm going to invest in the S and P 500 and I'm going to make 10% rate of return every year till I retire, or you know, averaged out till I retire in in 40 years, and it doesn't happen, you're screwed. Um, so you know, we, we I, I completely and wholly agree with that point. And um, if you're Focusing more on the savings rate, that's probably going to be a better success strategy than hope. Hope is not a good plan. Uh, <laughs> so that includes, you know, increasing your income and maybe even trying to figure out your costs a little bit, controlling those costs. And I think there was another point that I found interesting. It wasn't from Strongman's video per se. It was another individual's video out there. I forget the name, so I apologize to this person if you somehow come across this video and you're like, I made that video and you didn't cite me. Um, it, it was uh, talking about retiring with a certain amount of money is actually a failure because you got to think about it from the perspective of did you live your life enough? And that's actually a really interesting way of looking at it, right? So if you retire with tons of money, is that a success as much as you might think? Because did you miss out on opportunities that you otherwise wouldn't have and you would have retired just fine with spending a little bit more? Like you would have had 
the equal amount of satisfaction and happiness in that retirement had you spent that money in that younger period of time um, instead of just hoarding it. And now you you pass away and that money's there, but you're not going to enjoy it. Um, you know, something to think about. So, yeah, um, I felt like that was a really good point as well. I, I forget whose video that was from, but I, I took that point a little bit to heart and I was like, yeah, you know what? That That is a good point. Of you know, course, the, first, the, the goal is to have it all, but. The first time I knew he bought VT and I looked it up, I instantly am like, okay, he must have got wrecked buying like penny stocks. And then he went to VT, right? I, I never, and then he, he told me like, no, no, he started. That was his like starting investment. Uh, he hasn't changed at all. I was like, I did not expect that. <laughs> I just want to shout out. Look at that meta bump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meta <laughs> and Amazon and Amazon. Meta and trying, Amazon to, bump. trying to segue this. <laughs> but all the people that talk shit about him, and it's like VT yeah. just does its thing, right? Yeah. No, I'd say it so. Just does yeah. its thing. Yeah. All right. Meta is was exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Now Amazon. Amazon, I am perhaps a little bit more, if not equally, excited about. Um, and because I have a write up, I have videos, I have a bunch of things kind of outline the thesis and it's really fun to kind of just watch the thesis sort of just play out. Um, and we'll go through it again. Um, I'll kind of shout out some of the, um, uh, you know, talking points here. Um, I won't showcase the, the write up from the club, but club members, if you're watching this and you're like, I didn't know there was an Amazon write-up, go to the investing ideas, type in the ticker by searching it, AMZN, the write-up should appear. Ignore the AI-generated post because that one was an AI-generated post to kind of test out an AI and it was kind of fun. You could read it for your own entertainment, but that's not the actual write-up. The actual write-up is the one that was before that one. Um, it should have been posted in Q3, Q4. I think the exact date was like October of 2022 go check out that that write up and then of course i have the video online uh, under the investment ideas section. yes it's under the investment ideas section so if you're a club member go check that out um and you can kind of read it for yourself yeah so i'll show the investor presentation from amazon and we'll kind of go through this so uh spark notes of what the thesis was you had a business that was also inflecting on its capex cycle which actually let's kind of showcase where they were and this was the very unique opportunity again you had the broader market that was sold off um in 2022 and at the same time at the exact same time so the timing was actually very coincidentally good um amazon was ending their capex cycle acceleration what i mean by that is they weren't really going to and, and anyone could reason this they weren't saying it yet you just had to think a little bit and again that's explain in the write-up you did not have to hear this from their own mouth you just had to look at the figures themselves and kind of make that conclusion or determination for yourself just thinking about it a little bit so at the time amazon was spending an insane amount in capex and you a lot of people were thinking and this is true because when i spoke to people this was their number one concern that there is almost no ending in sight for Amazon's expenditure and they produce no cash flows. And I kept saying to people, hold on, this is not a forever issue because, and I tried to break it down basically as simply as possible. Sometimes they say, if you can't break something down into the simplest form, you don't kind of understand it yourself. So in simplest form as I possibly can make it, they were building a UPS and a FedEx inside internally every year and club members bacon shaking his head because how many times did i repeat that <laughs> over and over and over again in the thesis um they were building out a ups and a fedex again and again and again inside of the business for but seemingly forever right that's what people were projecting and i said no that's that's not possibly the case that there's going to be an end point at which case they're fully built out and then we are going to actually see the fruits of that labor and once that infrastructure is built out fast forward till today what do we see now exactly that so let's first go ahead and start with the net sales portion of the slide we see that sales were up 14 percent year over year uh, up 13 percent adjusted for foreign exchange and what we see here they have the breakdown all nice because we have uh oh okay i thought dan's camera turned off and i was like yeah. my eye went 
what happened. Um, <laughs> we have North America breakdown, 105 billion US dollars, 40 billion for international and 24 billion for North America. And this, of course, is broken down by the quarter. Uh, and then you also have the net sales on a trailing 12 months basis followed up by that. And you see the, roughly the same figures and you see it's up 12 percent year over year. Okay, so this is where things start to get really interesting. Operating income, operating income, up 383% year over year. Go back in time. Go back in time when the thesis was originally shown. What was we talking about? What has transpired? Let's go back to the next slide. And again, this is before they said you didn't really have to look that far. Operating income trailing 12 months, again, kind of the same story is playing out there. Net income, roughly the same story is playing out there. They, they're turning on the spigot, the metaphorical spigot. Net income trailing 12 months, same story is happening there. So this is pretty consistent story. Um, segment results. We can get right back to meta in a second, Kai, because I get it. When we were talking about meta, we were jumping around a little bit. If you have specific questions, go ahead and ask them and we can try to get to them. Mm -hmm. I can promise you that. Okay, so segment results, North America. Uh, net sales, again, you see the, the figure. Uh, where I want to go to is actually the cash flow. But let's talk about AWS. Why is AWS so interesting? Because one of the pillars that I pay attention to is, of course, Amazon Web Services, that at their current size, being the largest... Um, oh, well, Echoes, you actually, funny enough, I don't know if you're going to make a video about this part. He was in here <laughs> trying to... Trying to, uh, uh, I guess, brag a little bit about it. So <laughs> Bacon bacon could see it. Apparently, oh, yeah. Yeah. YouTube blocks him for whatever reason. But yeah, Bacon could see it on our end. Okay. <laughs> it's beautiful. But funny that you say that because, yeah, he was in here. All right. But anyways, I have no idea why he has an obsession with a really small YouTube channel, by the way. Him being such a large YouTube channel, it's a weird obsession with this one. So uh, segment results uh, for Amazon Web Services, um, them being such a large player, it's still kind of impressive. Not kind of. It's very impressive that they're still able to print out this much growth. Um, oh, and, and, and Strongman, like, <laughs> I, I don't know why he doesn't go on your channel. <laughs> he, had, he, he got a fixation with mine. Um, <laughs> it's really weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. It's very strange. Um. So operating income, of course, also from AWS has been shrunk. But again, the, the part that's impressive about this is Amazon size. When I look at uh, Google Cloud, right? Google Cloud, it's growing, but they're coming up from a much smaller base. The fact that AWS is still able to print this, this amount it is still really interesting and really fascinating. So um, I expect AWS to just continue to be a cash cow and fuel other investments. Now, we'll get into advertising, but this is the other slide that I was trying to get to. Free yep. cash flow. Wow. Literally go read the write-up. <laughs> so uh, free cash flow now coming in on Q4 2023 on a trailing 12-month basis at $36 billion. Wow. Okay. So this is a byproduct of the exact story that we were discussing just over a year ago that Amazon the, the CapEx isn't going to be forever. It didn't take a genius to kind of put two and two together and say, are they really going to keep producing a new FedEx and a new UPS in form of in terms of infrastructure <laughs> spend? Are they really going to do that? Probably not. And that's exactly what happened. They reached an optimal point, in which case they could scale back on that CapEx and really draw benefit from that increase in growth capex from prior quarters. And then on top of that, they figured out really interestingly, and this is how good the management team is, new ways to monetize the same infrastructure. If you recall, if you're following Amazon, you recall that they've actually uh, announced a new business that in which case they will provide the delivery infrastructure for you if you pay them. So now they're also monetizing in additional ways, all that infrastructure spend that a lot of people can't have. And this is going to be a bit worrying for companies like UPS and FedEx that now they're almost going to be competing with the likes of Amazon, not in every capacity, but in some yes. capacity. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, you you say that, and what happened to uh, UPS? <laughs> uh, I, I actually haven't been paying attention to UPS. You tell me. Uh, not not ideal, Bob, as far not as... Not ideal, as, Bob. As, yeah. <laughs> like, if you, go, if you go just back to, like, two days ago, like, just, just look at a five-day chart. No, we'll pull, we're pulling it up right now. Okay, so I had no idea. Take a look at the high, take a look at the headlines. It's, it's like you, this is the free market in action. Oh wow! Like okay, so yeah, yeah. 
I wasn't <laughs> thinking that that was the case. I was just kind of just penciling the logical kind of roadmap of what no, I would no, expect no. to see. And I had no idea they even reported or did they report or is this just out of nowhere? I want to say it was a report, but for sure, like the headlines of layoffs, there's obvious correlation here. And I think in this case, it's safe to say that there is causation here. Uh, but that's just me. <laughs> okay. And as that star is saying, they reported. All right. Yeah. Good to know. So I, I had, I did not know that this was the case. It could be just happy Winston, but I, I expect this to be the case that there's going to be some form of, uh, okay, we're going to encroach on some of your territory. And that's going to unfortunately impact the likes of Amazon. I'm oh, sorry, of, of UPS and FedEx. Yeah. Okay. So um, just seeing if we had any uh, questions relating to this. By the way, I do have a theory. about the balance sheets. I'll teach you about the balance sheet. And I, by the way, yeah, I have a theory as to why he he shows up to you as opposed to a uh, strong man. Yeah, he's often under the influence. Your voice is rather soothing, ah. so it it matches his uh, mellow choice. If you know what I mean. See, I don't feel that way because I find my own voice annoying, but I think that's just standard. I don't know if my voice is soothing to other people, but it's it's very annoying to me. I can't hear my own voice. I don't watch my own videos. I can't. I can't bring myself to unless I'm forced to if I'm trying to react to something I said in the past and see if I was right or wrong. But otherwise, I do not want to be anywhere near a video of mine playing because just it's not it's not good for me. But I think that's a very standard um, kind of reaction for people to have. So... <clears throat> Yeah, it's just uh oh this is the other part because people are always worried um about SBC. Yes. Yeah. Um oh really good question. All right, we're gonna Ooh. get to this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of try to save it here, but I'll I'll get to that question. That's a good question. Um and we'll get to this as well, because I know that's a question, even though there's no question mark, but that is a question and we'll get to that one too. All right, so I'll just keep it there. Uh, so here we have the slide kind of showing the responsibility of stock-based compensation across a period of time over the quarters. What we're seeing here is that they're not extremely dilutive. They're keeping it rather flat. So the operating business is increasing and shares outstanding are barely increasing. And what's very fascinating about this is because I would prefer Amazon not to do share buybacks right now. Right now, there are so many investments that the company has in front of it that it could uh, be very destructive, in my opinion, for long-term shareholder value if they dedicate to a policy that's net share, let's call it deductive, so reducing shares over time. Uh, keeping it rather flat, I think, is, is prudent, so they're trying to be uh, just conscious about how much dilution is present, but not being too, let's say, shy about using shares as an actual tool to compensate employees and keep employees motivated. If you guys work in tech, which I don't work in tech, but I do know a lot of people that work in tech, a lot of our club members work in tech, there is a huge component of compensation for tech employees that is tied to uh, stock options. That's actually one of the best parts of the compensation is typically stock options. One of our uh, club members who recently started at Amazon this year remain nameless. Their compensation package, I think the majority of it was stock-based compensation rather than uh, cash salary. And they were really excited for it. Um, so congratulations to you uh, if you're watching this now or, or in the future. Again, your name is private. But again, <laughs> congratulations to you. Um, so, well, congratulations a little bit late because I think you started like six months ago, something like that. So, but you know, six months, congratulations, right? <clears throat> Fabio has a good voice, maybe not a radio voice, but a good one nonetheless. I take that as a compliment. Thank Whereas you. I have a Thank you. radio face. A I think face Kai was like saying, no, I live in reality to the voice comment. <laughs> Dang. No, no, no. It's, it's the exchange oh, that's oh. going on. <laughs> Okay, we have a, a, a sexy voice compliment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm feeling I'm feeling the love tonight, guys. Well, welcome back, Dan. Welcome back, Dan. Dan, do do say it in, in a very monotone voice. Do I yes or no? We actually I don't want a yes or no. I want a full explained sentence. Do I have a sexy oh, no. voice? <laughs> come back to Dan. He took a drink. So he was like, back. I mean, I guess it's okay or not. I don't know. All right. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. That means a lot to me. You don't um, sound like Mike Tyson, so that's a plus. So. <laughs> I don't have the lift. Um, <clears throat> okay. So 
What what is this about? Wow, high free cash flow, low gap profit. Wonder why? For who? For who? For Amazon. Yeah, because we know because we don't you don't have to understand financials to invest, right? <laughs> or is it is it tech in general or like some tech? I, I'm I don't not, know if, he's, if it's specifically targeted at Amazon. Oh, or tech, tech stocks. stocks. Tech stocks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. Stock based I, comp. Yeah, I failed you strong, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, because stock based comp. But in the case of Amazon, they have it really under control. And so that's not really a component that we have to worry about. And I just like that they had it there. Uh, one thing I am kind of upset because they don't have it here and I didn't see it the first time around and I didn't see it the second time around is their report on advertisement, which is another very important component for Amazon's thesis. And that was stellar. That was really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I... Now, I still maintain the projection that within this decade, if not sooner, I think like roughly, I, I have it to like 2028, that Amazon ads will surpass Meta's ad revenue from the period of late 2021, mid 2022. That period. Oof. Yeah. Amazon ads as a business, as a standalone business, will not surpass Amazon of that time. Because Amazon will, I'm sorry, not Amazon, that Meta will continue to to probably see some growth there. So I'm not going to make that projection, but I'm using the figures of Meta in 2021, 2022. Sure. They're probably going to surpass that. And that's I'm, exciting. I mean, if if they were willing to put as tacky as it may sound, like a an idea, uh, a little bit more CapEx to uh, their, their CapEx already committed to... Um, building a ups and fedex inside of them yeah and had those delivery vans be advertisements for omni channel ads yeah. <laughs> maybe i don't know that maybe that's too tacky There's no, no I, I, entrepreneur. <laughs> I just genuinely think and i maintain that amazon advertisement is going to be one of the most valuable points to to advertise out there on the internet yeah. um and We'll we'll talk maybe later as videos go on about the potential google opportunity because i think we'll talk about that after but um, we'll we'll first say th this question here. Yep. Well, can we watch a Paul Gabriel Amazon analysis? Oh, oh no. Please, no, 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 no. All right, but no. this question. So yeah. I guess all big tech is at least fairly valued now. Well, um, I'm on the record saying that. Uh, how, what? How do I feel about Microsoft? Uh, the quote unquote setup is not ideal. Yes, that's me being polite. The setup is not ideal. So I think that M Met uh, blah, 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 I can't speak. Microsoft just needs a little chink in the story and then watch out below. Um, Apple, let's take a look at Apple today. Apple, I said the same thing. And Apple today, after hours, is not down a ton, but it's a little chink in the armor. It's, a, it's just a little chink. It's China. China is an issue. And I prefer not to invest in companies right now that have, there's a distinction between selling to China and selling in China. Ch China is an in company. And so I don't really want to get involved with that as long as that's part of the narrative. And that's part of the bullish narrative. Mm -hmm. I don't view it as a bullish narrative. I view it as like a, a potential place where the armor can get chinked. Um, so Apple, uh, you know, selling off because of the what's going on within China right now and China sales. Well, let's look at the setup. It had pretty low growth, I think in low single digits, yep. uh, while a bunch of other big tech uh, companies were growing at least double digits. Mm -hmm. So you were just waiting, you were asking for it at the present multiple for something to occur. Uh, I didn't know what it would be, and I don't know if this is gonna be it, right? This might not even be it, but it's not something I wanna get involved with is what I'm getting at. But there are other, big tech uh, companies that I'd say, I'd argue that Amazon is getting to that fairly valued. Like they're very, it's pretty close, but a lot of the, also the, the results underneath it all has changed. It has materially improved. Um, but I, I don't know if it's necessarily undervalued. I would probably push for it more fairly to slightly undervalued not meta i'm thinking of amazon meta right now i think is uh people are now forgetting about all the issues it had before as if they never happened and now it has no issues now it has only good, good things for it so um i do have the other older question that you wanted to revisit from Henry. this one right oh yeah yeah you got it you got it never yeah. mind you don't oh no that. i have them yeah 
So Capital Mindset, how much credit should activists get for turning these stocks around? I remember Chris Hahn write, written open letter to Google to say lay off folks and they did it uh, immediately. So activist investors should get credit where credit is due. Um, I'm looking at one that hopefully turns Disney around, Nelson Peltz. Shout out to you. I agree with your plan, by the way, Nelson Peltz. You're not going to be watching this live stream. There's no <laughs> way you watch this live stream at any point in the future. But just in case that you do, I very much agree with your, your plan, your strategy. And you know, more power to you. I'll, you have my vote for what it's worth. Um, but taking a look at some other active investors like the one you were mentioning, yes, we should give them credit where credit is due. And I think that they have a larger voice than us lowly retail investors at the bottom of the food chain. And sometimes they can be a force for good for us. Sometimes they can be a force for bad, though. So yes. um, to answer your question, they should get credit and good amount of credit. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, um, I sent you a website, Fabio. Oh, definitely. Where is this website? I see it. I shall take us to this website, Goldman. And here we there. Go. if you scroll down. All right. So a do active investors boost shareholder returns. And the chart is this one, right? Yeah. OK, so stocks targeted by active investors have had mixed results. The median, the average. Yeah, because there is the part that, of course, an active investor can come in and work, obviously, for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, for their own, let's call it needs and benefit and not to the benefit of the broader shareholders at large. So I, I kind of agree. It is a very nuanced uh, um, issue or, or topic. So if we look at the um, median here, what do we see here uh, for 15 percent months before and after the campaign announcement? So I guess I'm reading it right. That's uh, 12 months before the announcement and then 24 months after the announcement the median has been negative and then, oh sorry i apologize yeah. and then the average the average has been uh positive on the 24. so what that means how you're supposed to read this is in terms of the actual counting of it most of them are actually negative but if you take the ones that work out yeah. yes the ones that work out work out really well and they're boosting the average figure that's mm -hmm. just math. <laughs> yeah. Paul Gabriel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Celebratory stream. I'm allowed to do this. Yeah. So it's like if you're saying like, do they perform like the stock price? It's like, yeah. yeah. But like, do they affect change beyond just looking at the stock price? You know, what, what are they doing? Mm. You know, they're causing a company to rethink what they're doing in front of like the public. Mm. You know, you know, eyeballs are on the problem all of a sudden. Yeah. Maybe that weren't there before. Uh, and you can look at like Nelson Peltz, like they are doing a lot of what Peltz wanted them to do, even though they won't admit it, right? Like Disney's not going to say, oh yeah, we agree, we'll fix it. They're like, oh, you're an idiot. We don't listen to you. But then they're doing what he wanted them to do, cost cutting, streamlining some of the businesses. And what else was it? Um, the succession plan thing, I would have liked to see figured out, but Same they're working here, on but, it. Yeah. That was um, one of the tenants I would have liked to see before I bought it, but I, you know. I could I didn't want to wait anymore. So yeah, I I there there's some examples that stick out to me, like uh relatively early days of Netflix uh uh was it icon? It was like, hey, return capital to shareholders, you have all this cash. Like I'm not saying that's a smash and grab, but some activists can be a little smashy and grabby <laughs> and work for themselves. Uh then there's like uh say a uh, Bill Ackman who's probably almost certainly smarter than myself but he messed up jc penny when he went activist on that like he tried to make jc penny into a mall concept of like an apple store mm. where it's like futuristic and all shiny looking with a gelato store next to the kids section uh anecdotally and anyone with kids will tell you or anyone been around kids recently will tell you that's a horrible idea I mean, well, the few times well, I've seen yeah. activists, they they have a specific agenda, right? Um, yeah. So I'm, I don't know. It's just like, do you, to just say like, do they benefit you as an investor? It's like, yeah. it's more nuanced than that. I think. I, I, agree. I agree. I think yeah. they can help. There's a lot of countries in the world where they can't help you because you don't have uh, decision making ability in a, in a company, right? You might just get the economic benefit. Yeah. So in those cases, you you can't even have an activist investor. Or something like a proxy fight, but um, yeah. 
Hey, international. But I think they can affect positive change. Um, Baklava. I don't think I've ever made a decision for or against an investment because of an active. Have you? Okay, that's a good point, Fabio. Mm. Have you ever made a decision for or against investment based on an activist investor? Or do they just exist while they just you're exist. They just exist. Okay. Yeah. 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 They just exist. And if I if I look at their roadmap or plans for how mm -hmm. they think the company should do, and I'm in full agreement, it's a bonus. Yes. Um, because let me talk about one that did horribly. Uh Newell Brands with Carl Icon. <laughs> So Newell Brands with Carl Icahn, that's an example of probably that's contributed to the negative returns. And let me actually go ahead and pull this up. Um, so probably many of you have never heard of this company. Maybe a lot of you have heard of this company. I don't know. But Newell yeah. Brands hasn't been doing too hot. And long story short, the Spark Notes to save you some time. They did an acquisition, a terrible acquisition, ended up actually ruining the, the company, destroying it completely. The prior CEOs are completely at fault. This is around the acquisition time in 2017. And you can see now, boom, absolute utter destruction. So uh, when you take that into account, as far as the, the data that we were looking at just now, it's it's been on more or less the negative side because even after that, Ackman got involved pretty early on. And then what you've, what you've kind of seen uh, across a period of time is he's sort of not really moved in a positive direction. Like he, he's he's been focusing on divesting some of the brands and then using that to buy back shares. Uh, he he well, they finally cut the dividend after so long. They've been paying the dividend. So Ackman forced the company to keep on. I presume forced because I would have assumed that they would have looked at the dividend and said we could really use this cash flow right now internally. Uh, but they were just paying it out in the form of a dividend and it, it just wasn't cut. And I think that was a huge part that just kept them, you know, persistently unhealthy. Amazon should buy Whole Foods, well, make, should make Whole Foods like Costco. I don't think that that would work necessarily. And Amazon doesn't need to make Whole Foods like that. I think Am well, the Whole Foods brand is, um, let's say, it's supposed to be a premium brand. It's supposed to be like a, uh, what do they call it? It's not where you can find um, art artisanal brand. Like you're supposed to be able to oh, find yeah. unique stuff. Um, what Amazon could do is create something completely new with a new brand and make it like uh, Costco where you need an Amazon membership to shop. That could be interesting. Um, but yeah, with this question, how do you manage your anchoring bias and advise people <laughs> who struggle with, the con with that concept slash bias? Um, I don't. I just like dive into it every single day and, and, and live with, with the um, anchorship bias. Imagine that guy not never admitting that Merck's a good drug company. And just getting yeah, crushed Farmer by Shill. sheer weight of its amazing awesomeness. Farmer Shill just hates hates non uh, non uh, uh, pharma companies. He just likes pharma companies, and he hates a Dan's favorite one. And then he picked the wrong ones, which is okay. So. <laughs> it's all fun and games, by the way. For people who don't know, uh, Big Farmer Shill is like a long time. It's all fun and games until I'm right, and then he's going to say that he never said what he did. It's okay. We we have to because we get new viewers all the time and sometimes they don't know that like who are the uh, what we call the staple uh, trollers that they're like it's all it's all just fun and game and uh, yeah. Big Pharma Shill is one of them so and yeah. he, it's so funny because he just to shout you out and I I know you you hear this from me a lot it's really funny watching him in the club because he'll be like just trolling incessantly <laughs> for like six hours straight and then some at some point a switch just turns on and he just yep. goes like super serious for like <laughs> yeah just like intense or, dd yeah in, intense due diligence <laughs> getting like, at it and talking with other members yeah ping, ping specific people as far as like what he wants as far as information and and like you know collaborates and yeah, yeah it's, it's him beautiful. it's him and inverse bio kramer because like it's because yeah. it's he's biotechs and then inverse biotechs it's like the two yeah. of them they just like <laughs> it's like a firecracker um so <laughs> Uh, what do you mean watches it all? Okay, uh, I'm a troll all the time. But yes, Lincoln <laughs> also. <laughs> um, let's say, okay. Uh, it's the one that comes on here ever so often. He comes on here quite a bit. It's the David. Kelly uh, with multiple it, lies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Strawman has a video on Meta. Ah. 
meta. Woo! Yeah. So the final judgment on Amazon. What am I doing with Amazon? Amazon was the one I still have so much appetite to accumulate more. Uh, meta, I do not. And people might be shocked by that because I sound like I'm so happy with what Meta's accomplished. It's just because of allocation. So yeah. you guys, you guys know like my allocation. I mean, what am I doing in the holding co? Every new monthly contribution, I'm not adding to the meta position. I'm I'm looking for other places to to add because I'm conscious about meta's size. Amazon, I think, is fairly sized within the portfolio and has plenty of room to continue to add given the opportunities. And then I have some new opportunities I've arisen. I've, I've kind of been adding to them uh, lately. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how what happens. Um, so I think uh, the next topic in question is... Oh, how are what? you retiring? Yes. It's either that or my shirt or What's in honor. Uh, Silicon Valley oh, Bank, Silicon the, Bank, the yeah. meme joke, yeah. That's a beautiful shirt. <laughs> so... It's a bit it's a bit joking because I'm not where I'm currently doing is um, I'm I'm going to be perfectly content with doing this for at the very minimum, um, you know, the, the end of this year and uh, into next year as well. Um, but what it's essentially done or how I'm basically describing it is I now have a sense of genuine relief um and that's been through this investing journey and so now and again trying to kind of address it club members were witnessing it that even despite when we kind of say we're not going to have you know or be emotional in either case ups or downs today i was and it was to the point where i had to like go out for a walk and just to to relax to just like calm the nerves Mm -hmm. um because it was it was actually a very momentous day uh it's sur far in a way surpassed my expectations um and you know it's i'm really i'm really lucky so really happy and just really lucky to have accumulated all this fine group of people uh since joining youtube uh really really grateful for that so thank you all and this toast is to you guys So we're going to continue to have um, some fun um, as well. Fun for me, um, not fun for normal people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not fun for normal people, but fun for me. Um, and as always, th this channel will never offer any form of course. Um, I think I'm going to be working on something that should be value add with Andrew uh, when he has time because He's also a CFO, and right now he's going through his auditing process. And for those of you out there who have been through that, you know that it's a very stressful endeavor. And um, so right now he's not going to be available for at least till the mid of middle of February. Um, so everyone, put your thoughts and prayers with Andrew as he deals with auditors. Um, as far as us on Capital Mindset, we're going to continue doing what we're doing. Um, I hope that I can sort of because I've been promising it, but I haven't been able to. And so I've been supplementing with live streams, just making video content. Go figure when you're working um, is 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 difficult. Um, so it, it's difficult to have time and balance to do it all. You don't have the time and balance to do it all. If you see someone who's able to post uh, videos, they're sacrificing something. Something is being sacrificed. Uh, definitely. Either they're asleep, they're just not sleeping, or you know, maybe the, the job allows for it in terms of frequency, because it, it does take a lot to do a, a ton of videos. Um, so I'm trying to get to a point where I can, and that's going to probably be a little bit for into the future, where I get to that point where I can stably do multiple videos a week. I'm trying to shoot for a time where I can do maybe three, and then the live stream. Uh, but it's it's been a struggle to get to that, even though I've promised it to you guys. But just just know I'm trying. I'm not trying. I'm not giving up on it. Um, and uh, you know, plans on what I'm going to be doing is well, uh, I'm going to enjoy the fact that I can more or less be relaxed and say what I want to say. Uh, that's really the biggest benefit. I I can say what I want to say, do what I want to do, and I think I'm going to be traveling a little bit more. 
uh so just um no uh, so just to you know basically i don't know enjoy a little bit more as well i bought a new car um that's was also something that i guess was inspired because i was getting closer to that moment and so it's a it's a car that you know i'm going to enjoy the hell out of for years to come while i still don't have kids um and then when that day comes that i have kids you know i'll hopefully still have a car like that or or that car and and then the family car you know no, you get it's too easy man you get an amg wagon simple as that yeah. There you go. 700 horsepower family <laughs> station wagon. Genuinely, I was shook today. Uh, and and you, you, you saw me <laughs> like that. And this is potential. I don't know, because I don't see like ever actually not doing something. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, capital mindset and the community. This is like for fun. It is always fun. Um, I always like love talking to club members, sometimes irresponsibly late. But just you, you, all the club members on voice chat, we just like, you guys have access to me, ask, ask whatever you want, et cetera. So it's See, I got to wait till I, I, I could do it except for the healthcare is the, oh, is the that, that's yeah, that's the healthcare, healthcare is the part is you just spend. I don't want to pay for my own healthcare. Um, so I got to wait 14 more. That's why. Well, maybe, maybe I go do that thing I, I asked you and then um, I, I get my healthcare covered. But I do like a more, I don't know, something, you know, on the side. Cause that would be a genuine way to get healthcare covered. And it's it is when you map it out, because I don't even want to say what I'm paying around healthcare. Cause it's it is it's crazy expensive. When I was working for a big corporation, uh, before my current gig, uh, you know, it's very uh, very inexpensive. And then now when you're I'm not covered by by the corp because it's not we're not the biggest company uh on the planet. So uh, by any stretch of the imagination and uh, uh the the as far as like benefits go you wear multiple hats first of all at a small or medium-sized business um and you know like as far as healthcare benefits go for the most part right now it's like it's all on me and it it, it can be quite pricey if you want the good health care yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh yeah <laughs> but th that is a possibility um so uh, I'll say it, I'll say it. But um, so I got the Porsche Cayman GTS. So very fun little car, um, very fun to drive and um, beautiful looking, good to look at. Interior quality, by the way, between that and Tesla is like night and day. But that's more or less to be expected. Wait, what's the interior color? Is it black or black. beige? I, okay. I have a black. I oh really? Know. I want the I want the bay or the uh the brown interior. Yeah. Brown like, interior I, looks nice. The nice thought, beige leather. Oh. Yeah, given where you live, I thought you wouldn't have gone black interior. But no, because yeah, you're gonna have to put a towel <laughs> burning. The car's covered. Even when I go to park oh, at, yeah. at work or the garage. Oh, okay. I just park okay. in the garage. All right, that makes sense. Um, Never mind. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, get a towel for sitting. <laughs> Yeah, no, I have I have the heated cooled seats. I use the cooled seats when it gets hot. But right now the temperature is pretty nice, so um, I actually find myself using more of the heated seats at nighttime. See, um, I want to see if I can get my wife to learn stick, so I can get the Cayman with the manual. But it might be too much to ask. <laughs> so, so the PDK is plenty fun, just so you know. The yeah, the I'm I, I know. I probably will just do that. Simple. Plus, like, you get stop and go traffic with a manual. Yeah, it sucks yeah, the light be... out of how much fun it is. Oh. No. Yeah, and it's it's also like a completely. I mean, obviously, it's a completely different driving experience. It's it's pretty much the just as quick as the Model Three, but it's a gas car. And it, in terms of t responsiveness and control and the feel on turns when you get into twisty roads, night and day, night and mm -hmm. day. It's it's really fun. Uh, of course, the sound is also really nice. Um, there's already something like uh, um, some potential future modification I've been eyeing, uh, but that's far into the future. I want to enjoy it as is for the time being. And then once I want some a little bit more excitement, maybe we'll I'll think about that. OK, so I was saying black is whack for everything, especially car interiors. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> You've been canceled, Fabio. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cancel me. Do it. I dare you. All right. Anyways, um, North Korea's free healthcare and free higher education. I'm moving to, to North Korea. Okay. So, but all, all that being said, that that's the that's the gist of it. I'm not actually like riding off to the sunset per se, mm -hmm. but metaphorically or spiritually, I am let's call it in a different relaxed state. And uh, all of you, you know, it's still like something that um, I guess it's not, this is not like a game that necessarily ends. The moment like we retire, retire is like the moment we start just aging. <laughs> Cause then you do nothing all day and then you're just like sitting down it's like, no, no, no. Um, all right. So we're going to talk about the banking crisis. Let's talk about the scary stuff. Okay. Is it really a crisis? Question mark. Let's be hyperbolic, Bacon. Come on. Fine. Yeah, thank you. See, be like Andrew. Uh, be like not Andrew. Be like Dan. Say say that we're doomed. Uh, but I don't have a cool beard. <laughs> you will lose everything. Yeah, you and you will be happy. happy. And you will be happy. <laughs> so, we talked about this yesterday. It continued to fall. Um, yeah. So, Dan, were, did you were you able to take a look at the transcript on earnings? It was really funny. It was no. Really I was busy today. Yeah, it's all right. I think we'll Andrew, be filling you up. I will stay for another thirty minutes. I have, I have nothing but time. <laughs> no, 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 Andrew. I'll stay on for you, just for you. I'll stay just on for you, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, so I'll, I'll you probably know. jump off in a bit. So, all right, I'll, there we go. I'll oh no, wait, I heard you guys. I was listening when I could. I was getting mm -hmm. killed today at work. That they they didn't put out uh future guidance on income. No, uh, not yeah. income. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wait, aren't banks supposed to? Do yes. <laughs> so the, the JPM analyst was like, "Guys, come on, give me something. That way, your stock doesn't trade to twenty five year lows." And the CEO was like, "Yeah, yeah." And then the guy was like, "Well, then give it." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god, I gotta look this up. Um, it was it was funny because like like you could like when he first started it off, the managers would be like word salad and then like spot spot bro spot. The other one would hop in <laughs> word salad spot spot. It was, yeah, it was it was messy. It was not great. It was one of the most entertaining earnings calls that I've ever listened to. It doesn't beat that other one where the guy was like, uh, yeah, we're changing the business. And the analysts were like, wait, 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 what? You're changing? Yeah, we're getting into this other thing. And we're not taking any questions unless it pertains to the new business. So, yeah. Um, all right. So question on if banks have a problem, we'll take the whole market down with it. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I, I guess the, the real concern comes from the CRE component. So commercial real estate loans. There's a lot of players in, in the space that are underwater, not the REITs per se, but um, maybe some of the REITs are uh, some of the lower quality ones. But some of these private players that are underwater in both multifamily and um uh, and I'm not talking about the public ones. The public multifamily companies, they're doing just fine. They're, they've been they've been killing it operationally. And this is something I was discussing with uh, one of our club members. I see, let me pull up your name because I'm going to call you out. Uh, Caleb over here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, Caleb yeah. and I, we, you know, we were, I know that Caleb is uh, not a big fan, but, you know, he's interested in the multifamily space. And some of the multifamily REITs are trading at mm -hmm. not interesting new lows, but relatively low price or valuations uh historically speaking so if you take a look at essex property trust it's trading close to the COVID lows uh cpt i think it's camden property trust is also trading somewhere near the COVID lows uh so roughly in line where, where, where it was during COVID. and so if you're if you've been sitting on the sidelines for residential real estate look at here right here now now is potential time to at least look and see if anything here is interesting um so yep resi reits getting smacked yeah we were just discussing i'm reading it i'm night. reading it oh the transcript <laughs> it's absolutely it. hilarious it's, it's beautiful it sounds oh. great also <laughs> he's so mad. i know you're busy i know you're busy but like if you can squeeze some time like treat yourself <laughs> you know i did say when this was initially proposed like 
a while ago. I'm like, it's a New York bank that I've never heard of, and I live in New York. <laughs> Bearish. <laughs> there you go. That was the thesis I was writing. <laughs> so <laughs> I like I'm like, New York Bank. I never fucking heard of this. What is this? So <laughs> Jesus. he's like can, can we have the net income and he the guy's like yeah absolutely dot 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 this is a transcript <laughs> so what the fuck? doesn't give it exactly yes. yeah it's just so just dots like wow i'll give all our viewers the spark notes oh so effectively what happened is since they acquired um what was the bank so uh was it uh, some SVB and some signature? I forgot. Signature. Oh, signature okay, Bank. It was signature. It was, so, yeah, it was signature. so they acquired Signature Bank. And what that effectively did was it brought the assets mm -hmm. over the $100 billion mark, was it? It was some, they, they passed some regulatory hurdle because yeah. I'm, I'm not currently invested in this company. I forget exactly what the figures are at, but they passed over a regulatory hurdle. And that basically forces the company to build up more reserves, something that they talked about in, in, the, in the earnings call. And so for the time being, what the prudent move was to uh, cut the dividend or slash it. I think it was 70% is what they ended up doing. And um, now they're going to focus on building uh, these cash reserves uh, for meeting those requirements. And then once they meet those requirements, they're going to continue business as normal. Uh, when we look at the NII guidance, net interest income, I apologize, I should clarify mm -hmm. abbreviations, but NII is net interest income. So when you see that in a bank's earnings call, net interest income, uh, when you see the guide for net interest income, it was absent. And they're like, why is this not here? Um, and then they couldn't really give an answer, which is a huge problem, hence the sell-off, because why the heck wouldn't you give such a, uh, I guess, crucial point? <laughs> um, so, then effectively the analyst had to just make a certain assumptions. You can read the transcript for how they calculated NII, but the, the analyst was complaining. And the reason why that analyst, what's his name? You have the name probably in front of you, Dan. Oh, uh, hold on. Steven. Steven. Polis. Yeah. 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 Long last name. So Steven, uh, hit, this was one of his top picks for 2024. So a lot was riding on the line for him as far as reputation goes, or at least he took it seriously. Good for him, by the way, because mm -hmm. he, he was doing a service to all the shareholders, grilling the management team. So this is not to d dig on him because what happened was not perceivable. I can't blame him for not seeing this. This is a surprise to him, to everyone watching. Um, so it's not his fault. In fact, I applaud him that when it happened, he didn't just go, oh, whatever. No, he was like, what, what the heck? He showed anger. All... Uh, current investors in NYCB should be very frustrated with the management team because uh, it's not providing color as far as what's going on. Now, on the surface, it looks really cheap off of trailing 12-month numbers. Be very careful with that. Uh, banks are dangerous, to say the least. By the way, if you're enjoying the live stream so far, feel free to leave a like. I see that we have a lot of people in here. And uh, let me see how many likes we have. I don't think we have 100 no, I got to refresh them. We have only 34 likes. What is this? All right. You guys come here. You watch the content. You can't, you know, press a like. Uh, that's all you got to do. Just just press just press that button there. And then that's all you got to do. Then you do all the service in the world. All right. So getting back to, to the, the content here. Um, this banking crisis might be, and I say banking crisis very loosely with quotation marks, might be starting from a credit perspective instead of a duration liquidity. Oh, or liquidity. Okay. No, same oh, thing. Okay. Okay. Liquidity, duration. Because duration and liquidity kind of go hand in hand. The only reason why duration is a risk is because of liquidity. Mm. So yeah. uh, last year we had a liquidity issue because of duration exposure. A lot of banks were underwater in some of their investments because they were heavily exposed to long duration. And keep in mind the bank that we invested in, the one that stuck it out basically, and then I, I concentrated into, had a couple key factors. It was still suppressed, unlike JP Morgan, but it had the characteristic of JP Morgan that it didn't have a lot of duration exposure. And so that's why we were so excited about US Bank. Um, now looking at uh, NYCB, they were 
quote unquote, or they appeared attractive because they acquired some of these gem assets from the fallen bank and they looked cheap on the surface after swallowing it up uh, for pennies on the dollar. So at the time, you might have remembered in 2023, their net income was just jumping up because they were recognizing those gains for buying assets for pennies on the dollar. Fast forward to today, now it seems like they potentially have acquired a lot of toxic assets. Part of the, the earnings update that you can see is that they increased their lo allowance for unpaid loans by quite a bit across their portfolio, which is very concerning because suddenly, all of a sudden, they're having to seemingly recognize that a lot of these loans are not going to be made good. So I think that um, there's a lot of noise here, a lot of legitimate noise. And so I'm kind of, I'm going to be avoiding NYCV, even though it kind of looks on the surface to be cheap. I forget what the credit ratings uh, people downgraded them to, but yeah, they also got smacked on that front naturally. The what, sir? Uh, the ratings agencies. Oh, yeah, they they, yeah, they also they yeah 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 they, they got they got smacked very quickly. Very quickly, they responded um, to this update. So yeah, Ally fifty percent, JP Morgan at forty percent for what is this? It uh, takes, hopefully it takes that's quite a bit. Bank. Yeah, hopefully that's just their bank allocation. Because oh, okay, uh, yikes. okay, yikes. <laughs> Uh, and for Fuhat, um, it it's gonna take a bit because I'm I'm uh, I'm heavy. I'm a I'm a big boy. I'm uh now two hundred and twenty four, I think pounds. All muscle. Yeah. And beard. And beard. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my returns on those investments. Oh, okay. okay, okay, all right. Yeah, if it was the allocation, I'd be woo. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. I thought the household solid balance sheets overall. I thought household had solid balance sheets overall. All right. So let's, let's talk about this, which I think it is. So there's nothing scary on the surface that I see. And I don't think anyone sees it. Um, that that's the point. So I think it'll kind of almost come at surprise again when, when it does happen again. Some something will occur, but saying that is not anything of value because you can't really invest on that on that knowledge. And so, me knowing that something will happen also is of no value to myself. So I can say to you, yes, it looks healthy, everything looks healthy, etc. Um, one thing I will say is that there's like the ominous signals that we see from both. You know, we saw it in the oil market, we see it in the bond market. So these ominous signals that indicate something on the horizon but remember we don't see observable recessions until uh typically we observe them after the yield curve un uninverts uh as the yield curve is currently inverted if if we were to have an observable recession now that'd be kind of actually um, more on the rare side let's let's say uh so we have again all the uh, I talked about this already yesterday, but the doom tubers that always all oh, recession, 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 you're screwed, you're screwed, you're screwed, constant thumbnails about how you're screwed. Um, they're going to be right one day. Sure. Uh, but there's, they've been saying that we've been screwed since like 2021. Um, and yeah, we haven't been so far. Um, and I think if, if you're using at least the yield curve as some form of indication, they're way too early to the party. And until we see that an inversion, I think you're still early to the party. Again, um, I we I don't know where it is that it's obvious where the crisis, and I say crisis very loosely because it there are plenty of times that the United States had recession. It's not a crisis. 2008 was very unique. 2008 was very bad. Most most recessions are just eh, recession. Happens. Yeah, happens recession, higher unemployment, but it's not felt like 2008. 2008 was very unique. And, and some people are thinking of all recessions are all going to be like 2008. It's like, no, no, 2008 was really bad. <laughs> um, Dan, you were you were an adult during 2008. How you was know, it? It was pretty scary as someone just graduated college. Like, it seemed like the wheels fell off the whole economy, basically. Like, 
I mean, you can you can see some of it if you go on YouTube. People can see like the news clips and of people on the air then. But like Jim Cramer was freaking out, one of those. But yeah, it was. I mean, like the news every night was about how bad the housing market was. You know, they'd have job fairs where just people out the door. Um, thank God I wasn't affected, but it was probably yeah the most terrifying job climate I've had since I worked. You haven't seen uh, returns when the yield curve uninverts. Oh, referring to what? Stock market returns or, or observable recession? Because I think we might be discussing two different things. But I'll let you uh, add to the to the comment, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Yeah, sadly, uh, YouTube live chat does have a character limit. Yeah, I know. That's the sad yeah, part. But not, not by the way, and I, again, I never want to be a cult of personality. Uh, I could be wrong. And if you guys prove me wrong, by all means, your comments coming up here. Okay. You benefit me more by pushing back and telling me I'm wrong. Because again, my greatest contribution to my success is my investments. So please help uh, me. I believe the response from Pat P was stock market crashes. Oh, did I say did I say it doesn't crash or what what did I say? Uh, honestly, I didn't quite catch it because it was Pat, macro. Oh, Pat P, can can you say what I said that was that was wrong, or what you heard me say that was wrong, and then that yeah. we can go from there? Because I'm seeing your parts here. When the stock market crashes, uh, when before or after an inversion. I know, I, I know that YouTube. To put a comment on YouTube Live is like annoying. Yeah, Try to put as much as you can in one thing. Well, when the yield curve uninverts, okay, we got the first part of the. Yep. Uh, don't worry, don't worry about everyone else's comments. We'll go straight to to your next comment. Vertical line, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Internet Warrior. <laughs> Solved. <laughs> okay, here we go. So when well, when the yield curve uninverts. We don't say the mild recession. It's always a hard landing. Oh, okay. Well, um, I guess in, in that sense, I'm wrong. Maybe well, what I'm trying to say is, do we get a 2008? That's that's kind of what I'm, I'm referring to. Only, okay, 99.9% .9 only one minor exception. Okay, but do we get a 2008? Because I that's what I'm trying to say is like 2008. I We could get a hard is, recession, but... What what is going to fail to cause a two thousand eight style recession? Yeah, so hard to know. Something. I don't know. See, like, that's yeah. the thing people are missing. It's not just like this metric goes wrong or unemployment goes up or this. It's like no, no, no. Two thousand eight was a very specific reason why things went really bad <laughs> related yeah, to subprime mortgages being packaged into those products, right? And then the lack of regulation that can't happen again because of the changes made afterwards. So and the stress testing hopefully would help. So you'd have like okay, what? what would be the thing to cause the next, you know, great recession? Um, yeah. It, I mean, other than just saying interest rates when they go up or down, cause this event to happen. Like I'm, I'm failing to see it. To, to parrot uh, talking heads, like some of them say that uh, the longer a, the yield curves are uh, inverted, once the uninversion hits, the longer, you know, or shorter, uh, the recession will be but yeah again but i remember remember i did a 2003 uh video on where i did like all the projections of what 2003 would be yeah that, yep. that was fun to do because to see yeah. like what people thought 2003 would be and yeah. like spoiler alert they were basically all wrong <laughs> like oh everyone was wrong they all assumed doom and gloom recessions uh the end of like a lot of them projected like really strong drawdowns in the sp500 um, yeah. The Seeking Alpha authors, they did like a survey. Um, yeah. So so who knows? I mean, yeah. I thought every year they think it's going to go belly up. Yeah. Uh, Pat P had the addition. Uh, it is hard to know, but usually it's a surprise. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like to say we're in a student loan or housing crisis yeah. or whatever. Always oh, here. No, no, I should have. I should have like just. Well, I didn't want to waste the whiskey. Jump out of your seat. The whiskey and just like jump out like. <laughs> 
spill it all over. All right, all how right. Much, I got a question. How much have you drank? Today? How much whiskey? How deep are we? <laughs> no, it's not the whole thing. No. Oh yeah, it's, it's already yeah. It was already like. But, I was gonna be like, how are you still up? Okay. Yeah. Again, I two, got two, two glasses in my twenty-four pounds, so I got a lot to you know disperse um, as far as um, alcohol goes across the body. Ooh. Yeah, Andrew, you you need to crack open a monster to join. No, him. no, he can't. No, he's got. Oh, monster, <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, actually, actually, hold on, I'll be back. I'm gonna go to my rain. Yeah. You never go to bed if you open a monster this late. Jesus. Oh, 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 we thought we thought you'd never mention that one. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. Like, I will get to that video. I'm going to go through all his articles and comments he wrote. Oh no. I have all of it saved. Yep. That would be a fun video. Oh um, yes. Yeah. So he, I have like 20 comments he made, and he has like 12 articles he wrote. So I saved them all. Yep. But Coming in. This is all a imploded. This is a valid concern, by the way. Pat mm -hmm. P. What is that? Rain? Rain, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's it's been a doozy for me. I think this is a great conversation to be had. So how do we feel about the US stock market? Because we had this conversation in the club today, but we have like a panel here that can kind of express their opinions on this. How do you guys genuinely feel that a lot of the performance of the S P five hundred has been driven by the top companies? Um, so hold on, let me just pull up, uh, index. I mean, the first thing is, is this so atypical of the market? Because a lot of time periods you could probably look at and outsized <clears throat> percentage of return of the market is a small amount of so, companies. So I'm not so sure this is that different than any other period. So, so would you say that it's weaker that the earnings are concentrated in the top of companies or would you want Walgreens boots Alliance to have a better quarter and Meta to have a worse one? Yes. <laughs> I, I guess that's Andrew. Waste management needs to crush earnings for the economy to survive. To be fair, waste I think waste management's a decent company. Or is it is it WCN that's a good company? Uh, I mean there's usually a gem in one I, of those. I'm just going through like the bottom of the barrel as and P five hundred stocks. It's like oh, number four twenty two Insolet Corporation. Who cares what they do? <laughs> Very sad. Can, can we also say there's tons of great American companies that are not publicly traded? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's that's plenty. true, too. Some, bus, yeah. some bussies, man. Yeah, yeah there's, there's some bussies. great American companies that you don't get a share in just because yep. Chick-fil-A. Yep. Maybe some food companies, food companies, Chick-fil-A, uh, In-N-Out Burger. Um, Bucky's. They do serve. Chicken. Because some people like, I don't really? like pain stricken as much as others, but yeah. pain stricken. Um, yeah, you, you have you have tons of private American companies that are, that are really good. There's also the case they made, right? I don't want to open a can of worms here, but that small cap stocks have actually decreased in quality across time. I, I didn't okay. present this can idea we, can, first. But. Can we think about, well, I think small caps is the equivalent to match group. Oh, like, no, no, no. You're go Oof. No, 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 no. Ooh, I The feel goal attacked. of a small cap is to no longer be a small cap. <laughs> Fair. Right? So eventually, like, by definition, small cap is just left with a bunch of companies that couldn't get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right? I mean. Not wrong. Am, am, am I wrong in that? It's like. Not, not wrong. Not wrong. When you're picking small caps, you're picking the guys that you want to no longer be a small cap. So, okay, like, I'm, the, I'm the guy on the left side of the bell curve. Small caps are just loser stocks, people. According to Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's the right side guy. <laughs> that, that is actually like that. That is one of the things like uh, value after hours. They talked about uh, size as a factor, and if that is a factor, like when it comes to market cap. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah there, there is, there is like debates in quant world where it's like no, it's not, or eh, it still is. What, what's the factor? I'm sorry, I missed. Uh, market cap being size, like if size is a factor. So, it is true that I think now more than before, uh, it is easier for companies to access capital and remain mm. private. Yes. So, go figure. Past academic thought in finance may not apply. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, what is going on in here? Oh no, we're getting. <laughs> no, no, I was looking more at Caleb Scott. <laughs> oh, Caleb, Andrew, with a hot take: small caps can remain small caps because they know growth may ruin their business model. <laughs> well, I think there are companies out there that have reached that quote unquote perfect size and mm -hmm. what they can do is the best they can do because they've kind of matured in their market is just return capital to shareholders yeah because there's some industries that are hyper competitive and mm -hmm. so they'll be the biggest in a very fragmented market and it's not something you can consolidate yeah. there are businesses out there like that For sure restaurants i mean i I'm, I'm talking a little tongue-in-cheek obviously when i say it, but also like there is some truth to it in a way yeah but, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do think that's actually an excellent point that you're making though, is like the com companies that are the world we live in now, companies can become larger, easier. Like you're only really limited if you're a physical, for the most part, like a company that's a physical presence. CapEx intensive. Right. That was a lot more common. If you looked at like the top companies in the nineties, in the eighties, you had, I think it's a lot of oil companies. Yeah. Things like that. Things that are CapEx that are physical location intensive. Yep. PPE um, intensive. <laughs> so I don't know. Oh yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. I think that if we're looking at um um just like the current universe of stocks, uh mm -hmm. tons of businesses out there um <laughs> that kind of have just like limited unit economics. Uh like there, there's there's like some sort of cap invisible wall or invisible Feeling? ceiling yeah for them Bless and you. it it's it's really hard for them to to kind of grow because of what just the nature of the business that they're in mm -hmm. but they can be very good in that space but they the market itself is just small i i wonder though like uh and, and uh, like, you know, maybe this is too much to like what I had for, for my day today. Uh, a company like Procter and Gamble, I'm not saying like, you know, it's investable or short. You're buying. Or like no, you're no, buying. No, 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 no. Like I, I'm using them you're as an buying. example because uh, the, the, the CEO of a consulting company that I, that I talked with, he mentioned how, uh, no, just, how it's over time, but okay. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> like, okay. No, like, like apparently like he, he started his, his uh, consulting firm, uh, with the backbone of a lot of PNG uh, cohort. And apparently he's in the process of looking at MA with another consulting firm who happened to have a lot of PNG influence. And if that is the case, uh, you know, like, could it be that these old timey conventional, boring, traditional companies are able to get some more streamlined efficiencies with, you know, these consulting firms that, you know, get get the cooler margins, get the cooler top line, have a higher ceiling. Um, you know, I'm not saying that things are necessarily lose lose, even though like you know, it's same, things do seem top heavy. Mm -hmm. To try and circle it back to okay. the I, original point. And I guess I, I do want to clarify one thing. When I'm saying like the goal of a small cap is no longer be a small cap, that's a generalization. Yeah, yeah. There's obviously within there companies that are completely fine. And I'm totally okay with that. I was just saying as a general rule. Um, oh, I got one for you to, to, to kind of throw throw um, like a layup um, in, in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. We have Checkpoint. Well, no, Checkpoint's right. a mid cap, but there's some small cap. I literally forgot their names because they're so irrelevant. But the point is that there are some small cap cybersecurity names. The reason you don't know their name is because they're, 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 they're not making any headway. Right. But let's take the mid caps and not getting to large cap. I think checkpoint securities is one of those examples. Mm -hmm. So checkpoint securities, as far as a uh, market cap goes, uh, C H P T. No, that's charge point. Checkpoint, checkpoint, not, not therapeutics. I'll get it. There it is. Okay. Yay. So cybersecurity company, uh, always typically trading at a 22 mark, uh, multiple and serial underperformer of its peers. It's done well. Mm -hmm. So serial underperformer of its peers, but done well. You look at what they do. They don't really grow at all. They're the cheapest. 
and they're a bad company in a great industry. Right? So you still bad did well movie. for a reborn right. coffee. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a throwback. It's a throwback to a funny so meme. You, to your point, you still did fine. Yeah. Did fine. But you compare that to a CrowdStrike. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Why why would I have wanted one? Why would I have wanted this one over? Yeah. Jeez. It's like nine. It's one it, almost ten x in performance. Uh. <laughs> it also reminded you you should have owned more CrowdStrike. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was saying CrowdStrike could have been my meta. Fun fun question. Could we throw in uh, Walmart? <laughs> if I just went in heavier for the same time period. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Just for fun. Same five year period. Like, well, so I was actually saying, I'm reading through factor investing right now, like mm -hmm. maybe as a right video dock. and for my own investing. But like, I think Not their bad. research, like they were comparing small cap companies to like the large caps at their time, which was like it wasn't what we have today, right? These mm -hmm. large tech giants. They they were comparing small cap value to what ibm oil companies uh ge the conglomerate so I don't really... so is it still applicable today though that that comparison i guess that they made in that research paper well does it, it still uh, matter go ahead fabio no just answer this question quick this number is constantly changing yes. because you know value of money uh but right now it's i want to say Three billion and below, or two billion and below, and then the the low bound is like I'm going to give a range just to be more accurate uh, between two hundred and five hundred million. That's going to be like the low bound. Basically, it's roughly within that size frame. You yeah. this? Let me just Google it. So like, and like you said, it changes. Like my definition would have been, I guess I I think a little bit larger, like five hundred million to four billion would have been my. Okay, I was moderately close i don't wow, know if this is the three up to date 300 to 2 billion so that's that's a small cap and that's according what? to investopedia but that's that number is progressively changing yeah yeah what so about what were you saying, Dan, though, about the change or would i interrupt andrew that? i might have interrupted andrew i interrupted andrew what was i gonna say i don't remember must have been a lie he said that oh change. no oh, he yeah. was talking uh dan was saying how like the size of companies is just so different nowadays. Yeah. And I was just going to say, if you remember, was it 2017, 2018, when like Apple was going to break the trillion dollar uh, barrier? It was like such a big deal. When was it? Was that 2017, 2018? Apple? Yeah. When Apple broke the trillion? What was it? I think that's 2019. Was it 2019? Yeah. I was um, say. So. Uh, when that happened, though, it was like such a big deal. Now it's like three trillion. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like, to Dan's point, just the size and scope of companies nowadays is just insane. Meta is over a trillion. Is it, is it also a is function it? of liquidity? So, wait, is it at all time highs? It's, if not, it's, uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah it's at all time highs. Yeah, I think uh, so. Could, could it also be a function of liquidity as well? Or no, dude. I'm sorry. I don't want to look at Meta today. I'm just looking at Amazon. Why? What's wrong? What's wrong, Andrew? Those like I, 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 I've been your on portfolio record. portfolio did just fine without it, Andrew. That's that's an accomplishment. That's yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I've, I, I, I screwed up my exit of, of Meta, and I, I'm all right with it because I'm majority passive. So, yeah. like, who but cares? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm mostly teasing. But yeah, and like, uh, and. I did well. I mean, Amazon, I'm happy with too. I didn't. Look, I haven't gone into the earnings yet, but yeah. looking at the stock reaction, I'm assuming it was pretty good. Yeah, like everybody. If Jassy can, if Jassy couldn't tank the stock on the call, then <laughs> then they did good. Um, I, I did want to say though, I I like that Meta is doing a dividend, and I hope other companies, <laughs> Google, uh, <laughs> you know, follow suit. Just a, even a modest one. Well, I mean, they're all obsessed with buybacks, which is fine. Yeah. But I don't see why you can't do a dividend. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. We'll, I'm going to we'll sign at... off. 
So oh, okay. Have a good one, Dan. Thank one you for joining. Have a good one, Dan. Have yeah, a good I warned one. you that quick, huh, Dan? Congratulations on your win. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Um, that's all. Yeah. Uh, the the reason why I asked, by the way, for Walmart, because obviously Walmart does is not a competitor in that space. <laughs> Uh, and you know, like, yeah, market cap, not apples to apples here, but you know, like, like Mar- Walmart IPO would what, like, 80s, mm. you know, and, and you still have respectable growth. So, I mean, granted, yes, they are the biggest, you know, when it comes to US retailers, but or you know, hard physical, uh, you know, retailers, but. Yeah, you know, still great returns from a five-year period. Like, no. Yeah, I mean, let me let me actually remove it so we. What's the um? I mean, like, and and I don't know if both these companies do they have dividends too? So like, total returns a bit higher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Solid. It would it would bump it up a little bit more, but. Here, I'll actually get us our total returns. And, and chart. also, look at that relative lack of volatility. <laughs> Very underestimated by people how how nice that is. Yeah, it's uh, uh, I didn't have that much of a point to make outside of like you know it, it's okay like you can operate where it makes sense to you and still probably do okay depending on your time frame. Um, that's I guess the only point that I had. And Walmart. yes, I I see what you're doing, Fabio. I would say periodicity mm-hmm. matters as far as uh, if and when Walmart outperforms S and P. No, 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 no. That was not on purpose, but on a five-year basis. Yeah. You know, basically period, very period, periodicity uh, dependent. Yeah. And on a 10-year basis, Walmart also did better on a max chart. Yeah. Oh, yeah on a max is it chart. looking at the same? Yeah, it is. Look at that. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, like, even in a declining or non-sexy or non-appealing space, uh, granted, yes, we're talking the biggest winner of that space um you can still do pretty darn respectable there can be a winner in every single industry that can yeah. massively up. i think yeah i agree with that oh, yeah. and um i mean some industries look horrendously ugly and they can still do there can still be a player in there that just kills it <laughs> yeah um there were some questions that I think we got on uh, some of these big tech. Someone asked, like, I still don't understand what Facebook does that other companies don't do. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I, I think he's. I think the is that in reference to just like why the returns been so good recently? Um, I I don't know if if, if you're still in the chat, uh, can you um, clarify this question? And then we can get on to this one. Yeah, because I don't, I don't know if it, if he's asking like what's the uh, dogs uh, <laughs> <laughs> real she always, she, she always does this at night during the day she just like lays down kind of chills and then at night she's like okay Andrew's streaming I had the you cat know. earlier you missed uh, that um I have a goose so because uh, I don't know if the question here is like what Facebook the company offers or are you saying why the stock's done so well that you're holding it. Yeah, that's that's how I don't understand. The, the I think I don't. I presume it's not about what Facebook does that other companies. Okay, here, um, selling and buying short videos, etc., and sharing pics, events, etc. Okay, so you're saying the company actually, mm-hmm. like what makes the company's advertising revenue? Why is that growing outsized to other companies? Yeah, I mean it's it's clearly just the sheer amount of people. So it's the most one of the most valuable platforms to advertise on. It's like why is YouTube successful? Well, uh, and uh, and the capex yeah. that they've been putting into having a better algorithm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To use that, that data and actually, yeah. Yeah. Most companies don't have um, uh, that that capability to or firepower to expect. So. <laughs> Steve says, <laughs> "My dog or your dog's telling me to check on his." <laughs> This is a dog check live stream. Yeah, that's too funny. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. 
Yes, but at the end of the day, they haven't developed the networks that um, Meta has. So yes, it's just I, it. The more people use a product, the more people want to use that product. Like I, I don't particularly necessarily before wanted to use WhatsApp, but I was dragged into using WhatsApp because other people use WhatsApp, and then those people I needed to communicate with, and they wanted to I, communicate on WhatsApp. I would also add that uh, that Zuckerberg's push on year of efficiency, like that narrative, has shown up in the fundamentals, and it has like maybe it's the wrong takeaway but there is correlation for sure since you like you know the the price chart that you showed earlier fabio of mm -hmm. where where it underperforms seriously and then you know capex slow down year of efficiency margins improve even more and so on and so forth so like i don't i just have i have today just my um tutor pelagos fxd yeah i'm just the guy <laughs> you left a bit on um I just want to say, though, about Facebook, like, I guess the best way to explain this is there, there's several people in the community that have said this, too. But I know this from speaking to my brothers that run a small business. It's like you can't run. And they say the same thing about Google, but they also say this about Facebook. You can't run a small business and not advertise on Facebook. It's just like you have to run advertisements there. You can't not like yeah. the the um, the conversions that you get through there, like. They, they get tons of conversions through Facebook. Because also, think about this, and people don't. So I can't remember the other company. And I love how I'm saying this, like I'm this massive meta show, like I'm just super invested in it. Uh, <laughs> um, where does he, he listed some others. Signal, Telegram, TikTok, Twitter, Google. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. TikTok is big, like Facebook. The average age on TikTok the average person on TikTok has so much less spending power than the person on Facebook. Or like, Instagram, question mark? I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know Instagram that well. Oh, okay. Um, I think Twitter, I mean, dude, the, I'm not even, first of all, it was run by Jack Dorsey, who, oh, depending <laughs> on what mood I'm in, is either the greatest person on earth or the worst CEO ever. Thank you, uh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> if I have my black head on, but like if we're being real to be serious. Yes. Um, okay. I, yeah. I agree completely with, with what yep. FinTech Boy is saying here that yep. you can spend your marketing dollars however you want. However, if you aren't on Google slash Facebook, you have you've severely lacking attribution and you don't understand your returns and ad spend. I think you said what I was trying to say a lot more succinctly, um, which is exactly like the feedback I get from people that actually uh, yeah. advertise on these platforms like i mean twitter right now i don't know the advertising people are leaving there because attribution doesn't seem very good like i don't the other ones like signal all that i don't even know how you yeah signals like that'd be a really weird one because if you advertise anything targeted people would freak out <laughs> monetization is a it's a difficult thing no, yeah, for sure. It, yeah. Um, oh, Pat's saying, I think the other, the Pat's in the part that's going, so Pat's saying that Republicans will probably win the election and that they won't be nice to Facebook. Um, I think that's all theater. Yes. Yeah. I spawn 100%. It, that, this is why I really like yours like this year. So um, this is the first year that, um cm has existed on on a public platform through an election year uh, mm -hmm. federal presidential election year and this will be the year i have to remind everyone ignore the noise ignore the noise there's so much noise out there but it's gonna be really fun to to see what all the noise is and of course we're gonna have to talk about it occasionally but oh. it's gonna be noise we're going to talk about it to remind you it's noise. <laughs> by, by the way, people uh, in, in the club, we we have a politics channel. Why? Because it's a release valve. Yes. Like it, 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 if it if it was bad, like an annoying before an election year, like the release valve had to be made. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, well, two things. First of all, one is someone in the chat asked how old I am. Don't know why you care, but I'm 30 years old today. Just want to say that and then um <laughs> happy birthday yeah happy birthday <laughs> where were you in 2013 in 2013 yeah i was probably out kicking balls in a field somewhere definitely not investing i was also asked how old i, I am which I is was, weird 
Was I a sophomore in college? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Where do you I think I was? Do you think I was in middle school? You? 2013? No, because you're 96, aren't you? I don't know, Andrew. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. You don't know the context. Someone came in here. Yeah. And... <laughs> your, your, okay. your favorite YouTuber came in here and was like, you've invested in 2013? You're the grifter. There's no way. You're in middle school. Poor oh, man. Oh, so he's admitting yeah. that he is a grifter. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, well, because I... he, he didn't do the math, apparently. So. <laughs> Dude, he never, he never does. He did the high math. He was stoned. He always is. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I could talk about that. I mean, he's an idiot. He made me a lot younger. Uh, success. Maybe I look a lot younger. Maybe that's actually a compliment. Because you know, I went to a, I went to a wine place the other day. This is this is how it is. All right, I went to a wine place the other day, and I went to pay. It's like this wine bar thing where you basically go up and and you pay. You put it on a ticket, and then you go mm -hmm. sample all the wines you want. And then and then I was you know taking out my ID, and I was like, oh, he's gonna ID me because. Uh, and then you know I go up, and he's like, oh, I, I don't need to ID you. You you look older than me. <laughs> I was just like, excuse me? Oh, if it what? Makes, I mean, that makes me feel a little better because I got carded today when I went to dinner. We, we we got drinks and she's like, can I check? Let me see your ID. And I was like, oh, here you go. It's like, ah, oh, make me feel young. Thank you. <laughs> well, well, this guy was like, no, 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 you don't. You don't need to show me your ID. You look older than I, me. I, 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 think, like, I think I think 90% of the time it's just like how lazy the person's being. Like, I could easily look at you and be like, he could be a 20-year-old. He could be a 30-year-old. I don't know. I, like, I hope you think I'm a 20-year-old. Well, that's why you're in middle school in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> I will I'll figure out the, the context here eventually. But um, no, I, I wanted to actually pivot to what I think is somewhat an interesting question because someone said this. And it, and it actually kind of dovetails into the Elon Musk contract that I don't want to get too deep into. No, thanks, Andrew. Because um, someone asked, if Mark Zuckerberg was the CEO of Google, what do you think? The, do you think that their performance would have been substantially better? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, yep. yes. I, and I agree. My, my, I said yes. The caveat is he has to have the same power and complete, like, CEOs like Musk and Zuckerberg, because they're the founder and CEO, they have a lot more power than most CEOs. Yes. So like if Sundar tried to do some of the things like if Sundar came out and said, we're going to change the name of Google to like Web3, <laughs> it'd be like, hell no, you're out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so, uh, but I think it dovetails into, I, I was kind of, I, I didn't look much in the Elon Musk contract, but my, my understanding is that this contract was actually set up years ago. Like the yes, 2018. Yep. Oh, then I think he should get paid. I think that's stupid. That he doesn't. No, no. I, I'm also, I'm, I'm of the opinion that I thought they put a lofty goal. <laughs> I think it was 600 billion that it came out to market cap. No one at the time believed they would ever get there. It got there. Right. It was signed. It's not like they said if it gets to a hundred bill, we're gonna pay him fifty bill, or I'm being hyperbolic. Whatever, ten bill, a hundred bill, no hundred bill. Sorry, sorry, I'm moving the seats. But you know, some lofty amount. Ooh. <sighs> oh, <laughs> oh Carl's right there, the lawsuit was filed years ago when the comp was announced. Oh. But, but my my argument would just be. If someone goes and fetches the moon for them and you promise them like your kingdom, well, if he if he caught got you the moon, then you have to give him your kingdom. But like I don't know, like I, I I think the timing of when this all happened was really confusing and made the optics really bad for him because the way I thought it went, because I, I don't follow Tesla that closely, I thought because he wanted the twenty five percent share of Tesla. This was a compensation package being proposed now so that he could get 25% share. Agree with this, though. But they should just formulate the agreement like that. Like, I would say, for example, yeah. getting... Um... So, yes yeah. and no, though. Like, he's aligned with shareholders, technically. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I, I agree. It should be. It should be. Well, they, should be. they just make it worse. They make it like two pronged. You have to reach a certain operating metric and a certain share price. It's not or. It's and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, I'd say uh, my question is, what does Facebook do that's productive to humanity? I'd say that oh, it puts okay. people intact with other people and for companies it puts their products in the face of people who otherwise wouldn't have seen it before yeah. um so yeah it, it's entertainment it's not meant to be something like you know something that provides you with some added and adage in life like uh um well, you know schooling going to school is but i, I could argue that whatsapp is very productive for humanity oh well yeah well, because if you're saying, uh, unless you're just looking at Facebook and not the meta company, I guess if you're looking at Facebook, the platform, like you said, uh, I would argue that maybe my brother's business doesn't take off if they don't have Facebook advertising. Yeah. 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 Cause it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, that, that's a tough one. Like, uh, like I, I have used Facebook more so for, uh, just keeping in touch with old friends that are all across the country or well, some for some the world. And, you know, like there's no real harm in that. Okay. One, one thing again, you're once again, forgetting here is that on top of the quantity of people that use their platform, because at the end of the day, that's what matters. And that's, what's really hard to break into is getting that quantity of people to use their platform. Yeah. On top of that, the infrastructure, which is what Andrew was highlighting earlier is what, Facebook has is a massive advantage over some competitors like TikTok that doesn't have the capital to invest in a hyperscaler. And so they're forced to use Oracle, for example, in order to put that content in front of you. And so do all the other ones. So all the other ones that you mentioned do not have the scale. WeChat, because it's part of something much bigger in China, uh, probably does have their own. But um, as far as it, when you look at um, uh, some of the other ones you mentioned, uh, they don't have the same infrastructure that WhatsApp does. I or m Facebook. I would argue any tech company has alternatives. Mm -hmm. There's alternatives to Google. There's alternatives to YouTube. There's alternatives to Microsoft Excel. But there is no alternative to SoFi and Palantir. Oh, Get that's, there's no alternative to Palantir. Yeah. Yeah, and, but Alphabet. <laughs> Alphabet properties, you're right. They have the infrastructure and they also have quantity, but they're doing something very different. So Alphabet's YouTube um, is, I think, a vastly different product experience than what Instagram is or Facebook is. Um, if you just look at, for example, Alphabet's attempts to break into what Meta had as far as Google+, Plus, uh, which was supposed to be their competitor to Facebook, it failed miserably. So they are different products. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they, they do have solid cloud. He's like, I guess I'm a Google bull. I, so are we, well, and Andrew particularly. Yeah, I'm I'm Google Andrew more than my, yeah. my main issue with Google is management. I mean, yeah. like, and I think we talked about this. I think you said it, I was like, management's always been really boring on conference calls. But like, <clears throat> you see how quickly Zuck was able to just go in and turn meta around. Like, there were some, a lot of Meta's problems was IDFA. Mm -hmm. And I'm so mad that a certain video of me, of us perfectly explain what was happening with Google and then explain the perception of what was going on with Google was deleted off the internet. But um, the thing is like, because of his position in Meta and because of what he can do, Zuckerberg basically said, okay, we're going to pivot our strategy. I'm going to lay off a bunch of people. We're going to optimize. We're going to make everything efficient. And then look what happens. In like very in, I mean, one of the things that I think is really nice too, is if you go back and look at those earnings calls now, looking at, I mean, like even then, but in retrospect, especially you say like, he just laid out a very simple plan. We're going to make things more efficient. We're going to focus on building out our AI or our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we're going to become the best you know at what we do yes and that's what it they was... did and if you listen to google earnings call it's like i i don't know i mean like my assumption from looking at it is that they're trying to ensure their moat their moat within search but they didn't make that clear 
I I think that you know like the market has been such since roughly what twenty teens or like twenty five onward roughly where you know market's big enough to sustain a Meta, Amazon, uh, Google, um, Apple, and uh, Microsoft like all this way. Like no one necessarily has to die. Well, I also think that they are, but they aren't competitors. Google and my, uh, yeah. Uh, and you, uh, by the way, oh, anyone an advertiser, it's not going to be an or generally. It's going to be yeah. a and and yeah. And like anyone remember, uh, like you know, Alexa and uh, Google Home and yeah, weren't weren't those fun times? Do, are those still like massive revenue drivers or no? Which ones? Uh, Alexa is still Alexa. Yeah, I think has huge dominance. Oh, okay. Oh, very sad. Oh. So <laughs> it's it that one was one where Google slept on. Google just slept on that. I have no idea. See that I was I had a bigger position um in going into uh late 2021 and uh 2022 in Alphabet than I did Amazon. And that was still a complaint I had around that time. It was I don't know. It was like their uh, theater to play, and they just gave up. They they didn't do it. Um, and same with same with Apple. Apple had Siri first before yep. anyone. And it's like, my God, how, how do you screw that up? Steve Jobs would be very upset. Very, very upset. So just to answer Jake's question, I don't think Google's been a laggard in the market, really. They've always traded at cheaper multiples. Uh, yeah. And I guess if you compare them to like Meta in the past year or two, but on a five-year basis, I think for tech, they've done pretty well. Like they're, if you want a five-year basis, they're the outperformer for big tech. That's a bannable offense if you ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the real question now is, Fabio, you're going to sell your Meta and just buy into a certain hybrid working model uh, company, right? Oh, you're pumping. I know what you're pumping. I know Can you pumping. imagine I do that? And I just like <laughs> just blow up in terms of like, <laughs> not, like focused on philanthropy. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, Andrew's pitch is like, you know, just the, it's the next meta. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's the next meta. No, but it is a very exciting pitch. Yeah. And you know what's really cool about your pitch? It's like, it's not big tech. No, it's not. Yeah. Because I, I, I almost feel this is okay. Can I just be open about this a little bit? Because it was so different being super bullish getting into these big tech companies when everyone hated them in 2022. But like now, I actually can't help but feel almost kind of like a, uh, everyone's like excited about it. Like, oh, I'm sharing it like with that guy. Like, <laughs> you feel like it's November 21 again. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I can't help but feel that way. And I, I, I know I shouldn't, and it's psychological, but I do feel that way. I'm just like, oh, but like and, that guy. No, I, I get that because like they were hated when you were picking them up, and you're like, yes. I like this, and now it's like, oh, they're loved again. Your your company got mentioned earlier today, by the way. My company? Yeah, yeah. My own like, company? I'll, I'll throw out the day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it was specifically oh. Regis that got mentioned. Uh, what happened? Relative, rel it was in the context of WeWork and how bad kpis can be silly <laughs> yeah oh but like what what was yeah. the context did regis come out with an announcement no no, no. It, was, it was more of a like as a consultant he doesn't really like the business model but at least we know that you know the, your company doesn't have silly kpis and flowery investor presentations no that's why they've been profitable for like yeah years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it actually makes bottom line yeah Oh, Ooh. Big Pharma's back. Mm -hmm. Microsoft actually was the outperformer. Oh, I didn't pull up Microsoft, but but I mean, what I'm saying is they weren't the laggard. Yeah. Oh, Microsoft really was an outperformer. Goodness. Well, yeah. Microsoft's also been public the longest. No, I'm so. looking at a five-year time frame. And Microsoft does have a uh, setup that is lofty. Yes, I, I, they had okay. tons of multiple expansion. Yeah, That's I'm why I, I mean. <laughs> so Gil is rich now. Yeah, Big Pharma's back. <laughs> Bobby, um, show it. I'm curious. Show what? 
I don't know. I think he wants to see maybe the, the charts of the big tech. Here, I can pull it up. Oh, it. oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I was sharing that. All right. Um, I apologize. Big Parma. I thought that was pulled up. No. I guess actually include Apple because Apple's actually the truest outperformer. Oh, so yeah. So Google's smack in the middle, actually. 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 Yeah. Wow. Apple just destroying everyone. Apple's just like, yeah, all of you, get out of the way. Yes. Yeah. So, so, all of you. Yeah, I just think... Um, yeah, I, I do think that Google has probably the weakest management out of the companies we see here, though. And then uh, Apple still doesn't beat Microsoft in terms of returns. Probably IPO'd at a... Yeah, they even IPO'd earlier. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fabio drunk off of one beer kind of vibes. <laughs> I'm drinking whiskey. I mean... One no, and I'm not, and I'm not even tipsy yet. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, harumph, I say. All right. <laughs> so this is the the tweet I wanted to bring up because I thought it was kind of interesting. So Meta just went from 105 to 420 in less than a year. Tesla mm -hmm. went from 420 to 189. Uh, polar opposites in stock and CEOs. One rants on X, and the other one is focused on their business. Yes. And then. Um, I, I kind of gave a tongue in cheek response, basically saying, I mean, it might have something to do with valuation, but what do I know? By the way, the title of this video is meant to be a joke. And I posted the meta video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Point is, it's like if you actually go on this guy's Twitter right mm -hmm. now, he is he is not happy. Right. So, look, Meta's up 14 percent in 30 minutes and Tesla's down 20 plus percent and hasn't climbed 14 percent in. It's been 84 years. <laughs> um Apple soaring now. Elon just sucks. Tesla, it's popped initially. Sell down, people. Apple go right back up. Always does. Hashtag or dollar sign Tesla. Dollar sign Tesla yeah, yeah. I'd like to request that dollar sign Tesla uh, board of directs pays Zuck fifty five billion to come over and fix Tesla. So he's like <laughs> looking out at others, and um, it, it's it's kind of like he's like oh, having this sort of FOMO, uh, which. I feel well, bad, but is what was his investment in Tesla based off of? Was it just because line went up? Is That's it what a I'm tech saying. Company or a car company? I was kind of like thinking to myself, it's like, well, was valuation not a not a reason? So Meta soaring, <laughs> Tesla, Tesla, Amazon soaring, soaring Tesla. Yeah, he's, having, he's having insane FOMO, <laughs> and. Yeah. Some tractor supply Apple, company I mean, has gone up on a five-year basis is insane. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, yeah. yeah what? Let's see. I mean, they blow every, all those other companies we just brought up out of the water. It almost a thousand percent return. Um, it has to keep going though. Yeah, it, Andrew, well, we live in a world of what have you done for me lately? Well, the the thing is, maybe you just got into Tesla at the wrong time. What? have you done for me like lately? tesla was a great investment five years ago it may be a great investment for the next five years but if I, you I got would... in in november of 2021 or whenever tesla was at 420 a share you got into the wrong time you're wonder... buying it at forward valuations of like 300 pe or something i wonder well, if this person all due grumpy. respect what the hell were you doing i mean <laughs> like... was, was this has this person been grumpy compared to nvidia like comparing tesla to nvidia <laughs> I, uh, I know Kathy Wood has. <laughs> Oops. Oh, <man. laughs> yes. Yep. No, no, no. Because there's there's like the little marble that stops the alcohol. So you got to really like. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. No, it doesn't like pour. See, you take a knife to that. Pot, Here, <laughs> let me let me show you how much you know that's poured. Because I, I I pour in like little you know increments. Um. But yeah. So. Look at these price to book versus price to book for Tesla. Well, I don't think I would look we... at some of these on a price to, price book, to book ratio. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a great idea. My God, this chat is just getting obsessed over me getting intoxicated. Like, what's that going on? You guys are chugging. I mean, compared um, to other live streams, on average, they do have a point. <laughs> so just out of curiosity, because I, 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 I <clears throat> came in about two and a half hours in. Yes. Um, 
what was your thoughts on both Amazon and Meta earnings? And what are your plans to do tomorrow with Meta? <laughs> Henry, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Henry first goes like, Fabio was giving <laughs> one beer drunk vibes. Now he's like, damn, we went through that whole bottle. No, I didn't go through the whole bottle. Just, just anyway. imagine if they reported awfully and guided horribly. <laughs> So what what was your question? It was about how I feel about earnings overall. Earnings and what are you? What are I you mean, do? you don't have to give exact plans, but I'm I'm more of saying congratulations. Fuck you. What are you doing now? <laughs> congratulations. Fuck you. Someone said that to me on Twitter. They literally said congratulations. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely, because they they've been a long time follower. Um, right now my plans with Meta haven't really changed. So I haven't there's not really a reason that it's given me to sell. Um, I'm going to go over the earnings report again and again and again and again. And Jesus Christ, the lore is just expanding. Henry It's three empty bottles at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you're making me laugh. Like, let me just put the dogs out there like begging to go outside. No, no worries. No worries. So, um, in short, actually, because this was his question, yeah, yeah, I'll wait so for him we'll to come to back. Sure. So we'll come back to the um, Squawk Square. The, yeah, the tweets here. I mean, like, come on. It's like Squawk Square. it's looking at Tesla stock almost every single day. <laughs> it's not it's not healthy. It's not healthy. I don't know. Get some help. This, this is like not once it. every hour on Get average. Uh, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, because all right, there's a there's a couple hour gap, but there's yeah, 12, hour, 12, 12 hour, 12 eight. Yeah, before that it was eight. thirteen. There's an eight. Yeah, oh, this geez. guy's not liking it. He's not liking it. I'm I'm sorry. Like I've I've held companies that have gone against me in like awful ways, but like, really? Yeah. I, oh well, I don't know. I don't know. Hell, the index could go down like you know real soon against me, and you know it is what it is. Like, oh, you missed when we were talking about this, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> he he is down at a conservative estimate. He yep. is down close to nine million. It's eight to nine million. Yep. On on the more aggressive estimate, I think it's surpassed fifty. It's beautiful. So between either way, yeah. he dwarfs. Actually, I think me Kevin has him beat. I think me Kevin still has him beat at over a twenty million dollar loss um, but, from the period of the clown market. But did me Kevin get margin called? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. But me Kevin has the largest um, known loss yeah. because he yeah. started out with forty million. He mm -hmm. dipped out of the market at 20 yep. million. So that's a, you know, right yeah. there. He already lost yep. 20. But this is a good question, right? What happens if Facebook goes down to the 90s again? What would you do, Fabio? Well, I, I hope that I'm able to identify a severe change in business quality. Um, but what I am doing, because I'm still at the point in my life where I'm still contributing as much as I can to my portfolio. And what I've effectively done, and I've done this for a while, um, is just allocating capital away from Meta, but not taking away capital, I'm not punishing a winner. I'm just allocating net new capital into other opportunities. And that's how I've been diversifying. Or diversifying. Um, diversifying to some extent. Uh, <laughs> in, winners in current, keep on winning. <laughs> winners keep on winning. So some of the companies that have risen up the ranks for example of course is like amazon uh, uh taiwan semiconductor and you know a few others and here and there and you guys might forget that musa murphy's usa was once a top holding and now it's been cut significantly but it's still in there so. <laughs> hurts me hey hey i, I, I that, that for now. why does that hurt you 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 won yeah no why? He, he, he didn't hold he, he betrayed me. At what are you two talking Fabio? about? He's at two at two, he, he held to realize the thesis. Like, <laughs> you won. You guys won. Bacon's like, Bacon's like, he's crying over making money. Yeah. Like, 
Like, I was the one who was skeptical and sat on the sidelines, and now since poor for it, everyone point and laugh at me. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fair. <laughs> uh, Brokey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Not wrong. Aha, uh -huh, Brokey. <laughs> yeah. Dude, next, you know, five is going to start doing Andrew Tate videos. He's like, where's your Porsche, Brokey? <laughs> <laughs> What was uh, it? So yeah, there's, I, there's... I do like the one. He had a hilarious video where he talks about why, how to not get in a fight on the subway. Have oh, you seen that? Boy. I haven't. I, I, I how do you not get in the subway? Don't be broke and have to go in the subway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're not in the subway, sure. Yeah, you know, um, not wrong, but okay. What do you Guys, think? also, I want to highlight. Do you, you see how most of the stocks that any of, that I own in my portfolio? or any stock has like existential threats that do Threat. exist, right? Wait, so, so what about coal? <laughs> coal, what do you mean coal? Like coal. Oh, coal. Like we coal were company. asked a question about coal. Yeah, we'll get into yeah. coal because that was from cool. JP. Shout out to you, yep. JP. Shout oh, C-O-A-L. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, but Taiwan Semi, I'm making a bet that we have relative peace, that they're not going to be able to necessarily conduct a hot war against Taiwan. If it happens, you know, you can laugh at me. Yeah, I mean, they, they have them. they have like diversified their geographical footprint. They'll still get hit. Uh, oh, of course, hit. it will. It will. But, but like that's inevitable. But all fabrication will get hit because yeah. <laughs> you think Intel is immune from that? You think no. Samsung will be immune no. from that? The supply chains for fabrication are yeah. so sensitive. Yes. A hot war mm -hmm. in Eastern Asia. Oh, my goodness yeah because shipping will be a casualty like that's yeah. that's just yeah damn or it's at risk rather at risk oh yeah andrew i uh, grievous is asking me to answer your question before you left about what i'm gonna do with of course because i i put amazon in the question okay well <laughs> meta i have no plans on doing anything with it besides diversifying away from it as much as i can from net new contributions mm -hmm. and hopefully some of the other positions start to also really perform there's one in particular i think has the opportunity to actually surpass amazon if i'm right on it it's the one that i i don't Can't want to yes it's oh, that big of a position I, for you, huh? really what? it's that big of a position for you is what you're saying it's no, it's it's in that medium that if 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 it actually pans out, because the the growth that it would experience is not it doesn't have to be that crazy, uh, because like for example, where it sits at right now is roughly in the middle line of the portfolio, so it's it's right below the the bigger positions, but if it experiences the level of growth that is potentially implied in there, it could get mm -hmm. up there. It could yeah. definitely get up there. It, it's a it's a solidly core position for me. I, I think it's like eight or nine somewhere there. It's not, but I can answer this question. But for the most part, it won't change. Just like it didn't change with Biden. The most of the the things that I bought with Biden was energy. Um, I don't own energy anymore. I, I had Conical Phillips and Occidental Petroleum, and then I actually made a horrible mistake. Sold uh, Occidental Petroleum in favor of having just Conical Phillips. The other one would the other way would have been much better um and now with uh with trump i guess you you could play make a play on sentiment on the private prisons but it's just gonna be sentiment the businesses are doing just fine if yeah. you've been looking at them they, they're doing just fine um but the sentiment is probably what will shift dramatically and then they'll probably outperform yeah that was that was one where i uh i exited too early everyone point and laugh I am but laughing. made some money <laughs> all right so um i think that answers that question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then what was the other question that we wanted to get to coal question mark or coal. something else coal stocks you know we can talk stocks. about coal. so peabody BTU. while you guys are pulling that up um, i mean i did get going oh okay happening. you gotta Say go congrats once again fabio and and fuck you there we go. <laughs> Love you too, Andrew. End, end stream, right? No, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> That's a reference to when Andrew one time left the stream. He accidentally ended the stream. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, I think you were having a conversation with some other club members about this. So you might be actually more refreshed as far as coal stocks go. Not as not really. Like I, I'm I'm like just starting to redig. Aha, <laughs> get it? Coal dig. Ha. Uh but you know, someone else also uh in the club mentioned another ticker, and I, I'm a little hesitant to uh say the ticker since it's their baby. I don't know if they're all right with that or not. Um anyways. Yeah, it just seems like yes, a lot of them have run up recently, but it's optically they still seem pretty discounted still. Okay. And I, I get I get, you know, why they're discounted and why they were that low to begin with. And you know, maybe they deserve to still stay low, but yeah. Because it's all ESG and oh. regulatory related. Let me go ahead and show the coal stock. So yeah. this was probably one of the best performing uh let's call it business types, at mm -hmm. least in the energy over the past. Uh, five years at the bottom in 2020 and this is when they were let go by institutions yep. i think you had like the boycott from blackrock um <laughs> on these <laughs> uh assets and they got very cheap and since then sorry i quoted you 600 percent. i was so wrong two thousand <laughs> percent way better than, than what i just told casually you know yeah. and to the top 2600 it's almost three thousand yeah. percent so i gotta be honest this is an example mm -hmm. um of oh yeah no i have no idea how <laughs> it was kind of like a, okay <laughs> but um yeah looking at uh back then i was way too scared to buy them yeah and same i am here. perfectly fine with admitting that yeah same here but back then, if you were investing back then, it was like peak fear for these assets. And even here, I remember when it was here, I, I took a look at them and I was too scared. I took a look here. I was probably even more scared because um, you would think other commodity investors who are more informed than yourself would be like pounding the table. It's like saying, this is the buy of a lifetime. And I am not one of those. And so I, I genuinely did not have any semblance of the confidence to to kind of say oh i'm gonna i'm gonna buy these assets up um they were cheap by every stretch of the imagination however you looked at them but i was just scared that there was something i wasn't understanding or seeing so i didn't buy today they still yes. look really cheap okay so i'm not dumb in that regard no no they they look really cheap they're they're earning a lot of money right now but the thing is again I'm not too familiar with the coal markets. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, this business is going to be tied heavily to the end commodity that they sell. And it's a commodity. So their coal is the same as other people's coals, et cetera. So they don't really have pricing power. Um, and I put up Peabody. There's other ones. Yeah. Uh, th really, the thesis here behind any of these coal companies is that they're going to return a significant amount of capital to shareholders in the form of a buyback. Of course, the, the buyback's not nearly as effective as if, if they did it back then. But also, by the way, the price of coal was also different back then. So yes. key point to note. Uh, there was also a big concern that a lot of these companies would go bankrupt uh, because of where the price of energy as a whole was. You know, mm -hmm. we had oil, coal. Um, so all of it was under a near-term bear market. The story's played out. We, we have the benefit of 2020 vision. Um, looking at the year 2020, pun intended. Yeah, I, I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and another sneeze is coming up. Oh, oh no, it's not going to happen. You already called it out. It, it never works that way. Exactly. That's why I call it out. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed to sneeze on camera. It's just not, oh, really? it's not allowed. No, it's just not allowed. Um, oh, Day Trading Mindset is telling us to use the ticker. HCC. He wants us to pump his bags. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Warrior met Cole. Um, Okay, so here's here's something that stands out immediately. It didn't mm -hmm. seem to have the same amount of pressure yep. coming down as the other ones did. Mm -hmm. Not as strong of a performance, but that's probably attributable to the fact that it didn't Lots. get as discounted. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, EM made a video back in December and gave Arch Resources a market <laughs> multiple. Okay, did you expect anything different? I mean, come on. No, no. And I, I was going to give you a little bit of pushback, by the way, because uh, Day Trading Mindset did say it's a different kind of coal. 
there are differences, and I, I'm I'm way too sloppy, but like generally speaking, though, sloppy conceptual way, like some coals are better for metallurgy, um, etc. We have a comment. Hey, from X. shout out X Twitter. We have a comment from X, and all I got to do is like smile at the camera because that's just the my. Okay, so what do I think about China stocks, Bob and JD? So, uh, cools 007. There's tons of videos I have on YouTube on this topic, plenty of them. I'm talking like 10 or so hours of content, uh, going over and explaining the, the structure, uh, and why I think for me, China stocks will remain forever and avoid. I also have videos going over how I believe that the Chinese government will go through periods of coddling Western investors in order to make them feel more comfortable uh, in investing in their equities. And that actually kind of comes in line with today, right? On Monday, the Chinese regulators announced that they will be prohibiting inside of China. That doesn't affect the United States, obviously. But inside of China, you can no longer short their stocks. Um, prior to that, they actually made announcements that large shareholders of said stock, and this was Q4 of 2023, uh, the large shareholders would now no longer be able to uh, willy-nilly sell their shares of said stocks. All of these actions are actually showing signs of weakness. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, well, look, they are actually putting up uh, an effort in order to prop up their stock market. This might be the time to actually invest so that we can profit from the change in sentiment. I think that's the only thing that's at play here. And I maintain that to, to this day, that the play here is just a shift in sentiment. There's nothing fundamental about these companies that make them a buy. That being that you can't even own them. So it already breaks the bare bones principle rule of investing that it's about ownership. So mm -hmm. Alibaba, JD.com, if you cannot own the stocks, then you simply cannot invest in the stocks. And if you follow that principle throughout your life, you'll probably avoid a lot of crappy uh, products out there. Yeah. You cannot own the underlying asset. It's an avoid. And so I follow that basic principle in Chinese uh, investing products, primarily through the restricted uh, stocks such as JD and Baba. And they look extremely cheap on paper. And trust me, this is not priced in. The Western markets have not yet grasped that they don't own anything whatsoever. If they do, they would probably be valued at close to zero. Um, not zero because the reason why is you could make an argument that there could be room for change in, in the administration. And so the investor that is accumulating them at near zero is kind of just making the bet that at some point in the future, the change in administration would change the rules and allow Western individuals to own shares of common stock in these companies. And then you are an actual owner and then there's nothing, my issues are, are for a gone conclusion. If you actually take a look and, and I actually have videos on this as well about token capital returns to shareholders. Token as in it's it's not really anything meaningful, it's just poultry. Look at the buybacks, poultry, all of it poultry in comparison to how much capital they've raised to the West. Because the goal is not actually returning meaningful capital to shareholders, but instead coddling the Western investor into a false sense of security and an effort to eventually raise more capital because that's all the Western markets are to them, a free piggy bank for them to raise capital for their own economy without giving up ownership, which is supposed to be the initial cost. But for whatever reason, Western investors turn a blind eye to, to the Chinese companies. Yep. That's uh, the long story short. Yep. Uh, that being said, though, like I don't think you would be surprised if someone were to make money, say, speculating or trading on it. Yes. Not would be yeah, surprised. Like, I've done so it for I, fun, yeah, but yeah, like so. That being said, like you know, we're we're not. Uh, well, I'm of the opinion for myself rather, it's not for me as an investment for those reasons that you mentioned. Uh, but you know, anyone could easily do all right uh, as far as like a trade or speculation. Like, you know, I could I could eat those words, but like you know, in that context, sure. Like you know, maybe there's something there. I'm definitely not wrong about your non ownership, Gil. That's actually in the yeah. prospectus of mm -hmm. the same ETFs you are buying. They disclose it in them. Yes. Okay. This is not secret information. This is known information if you know where to look. A lot of times, Western investing institutions don't like to shout from the rooftops this fact, but they have to tell you. And there's also, we can get into the complicated nature of a difference between selling into China and out uh, into China. Yep. So into or in China and to China. 
there's actually a, a reason why there's a distinction and also a distinction between cash held in China and cash held everywhere else in the world. Yep. I think that actually regulators should jump on that and force companies to change the classification for a particular reason. Yep. Um, but it's not the current regulation, so we don't label it differently. And that's mm -hmm. how it is right now. Um, any interesting opportunities left in the market? I think real estate, believe it or not, still remains an interesting opportunity. Publicly traded real estate. Um, and let me think of the other ones. I mean, I, I kind of was building out semiconductors and semiconductor fabrication investments, but those have ran up now. Um, I'm already kind of fully, not fully deployed. I would definitely want more. Because um, I'm in a position like, right, because where I'm at in age, I'm still contributing. So... You know, it's if, if we see a sell off, that's good for me. I'm not at a fixed amount of capital. Capital, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to think. Any other I, obvious? I, I would say it depends on the person also. Like if you're a momentum or growth or uh, quality or, you know, value, like, I don't know. I think tomato, I don't know, tomato, I don't know what is. No, I mean, depends on your what you're looking for, quality or value. Yeah. 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 There's like, um, See, I, I, I want to be careful about just shouting tickers without providing any additional context. But like there's some tickers that I've seen out there that look individually or optically cheap, like Crocs mm -hmm. looks cheap. Oh, thanks. No, it optically looks cheap. That's not an that's not necessarily endorsement for full disclosure. I have a long position in Crocs, but because I, I do, sh I should say that uh, you haven't seen a portfolio update, but the next portfolio update, you will see Crocs. So publicly on YouTube, uh, club members are that they already know it, but yeah, publicly on YouTube, you guys will know. And whenever I do it, I'm long Crocs, but I'm telling you now because I just mentioned the ticker, so I just want to be. Yeah, I've, I've been long Crocs. Thanks, thanks, He's, Fabio. Bacon's been long Crocs. Um, another one that optically looks cheap. Um, you could say that I'm not going to talk about REITs. Um, I'm going to avoid them. Um. I just had it in my head and I literally forgot it as I was. Is it is it what's on the screen? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. These these like okay, these optically look cheap, but they weren't the one I was thinking of. Oh, uh some of the credit credit bureaus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of the credit bureaus. I'm looking at right now the ticker TRU. Um TransUnion. Mm -hmm. Uh trying to think. One that looks really that looks cheap and is cheap if they reach a master limited settlement, but you got to be very careful uh, and be like extremely careful is 3M. So 3M is going to be like on the watch list. If they get that resolved, then there's something there. But that has to get resolved. You have to readjust your valuation for the for the decrease in cash flows because of the payments that are going to go out, and then you have something there. But it's optically cheap, but yeah. it's I, it's you're kind of diving in a little bit too early. Um, so yeah, that, that's my, the answer to that question. And this one, why, uh, why I don't own 10 cent ADR. I own process. ADR. There's nothing wrong with the ADR. There's yeah. nothing wrong with an ADR. American depository receipt is not the culprit. It's the, mm. the specific, specific nature of the structure of the VIE. That's what people keep. When I get into little discussions on Twitter or anywhere, they always harp on, well, I know it's an ADR. No, it's not that it's not, an ADR. Yeah. It's a, a VIE, and it's not that it's a VIE. Yes, it's the specific structure of how this type of VIE is is structured. Yeah, it's like people don't look at court uh, previous court documents, and you know, uh, judicial precedent doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah, we, we just immediately think equities and these yeah. companies. They they do. It's just the like again that fundamental point that you drove, and I hope that me repeating it also gets to it is you know if you're an investor and you view this as an investment, fundamentally it is the ownership, and if the precedent has been Yahoo owning some of what Baba back in the day uh -huh. and trying to sue to like you know get their get their claims as a shareholder. And the CCP telling them, no, screw you, kick rocks. What yes. hope do you as as a person thinking like, you know, you have ownership when the judicial precedent established is clearly said no? Um, for, as I just said, it's not 
in the current portfolio update. I'm saying it now because I mentioned the ticker and it will be in the next portfolio update. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel the need to, to outright mention it. I'm yeah. only mentioning it to you here in this live stream because it's a new one. And the fact that I mentioned the ticker, I would feel, uh, I don't know, just a little weird if I didn't also disclose that I am currently long Crocs. You will see it in the next portfolio update. You wouldn't see it in the previous one, in the next one. Yeah, but that that's why I mentioned. Otherwise, if I already had updated it, I wouldn't mention it because I would assume the information is out there and you guys could go back and check it. And you know, there's no need for me to constantly say for all disclosure, I'm long, you you would probably know. But if yeah. I'm newly long something and I mention the ticker, I will tell you if I am mm -hmm. or not. Um by the way, not my not my original idea. Like people yeah. troll me and say that it is my idea, but it's not my original idea. Uh, someone else was nice enough to share it to me. <laughs> uh, seems that China's economy has already crashed and there uh, could be a sentiment play. As Fabio said, I'm not going to try and time the bottom, but it's one of the positions I'm wheeling. And probably if you're looking for a little bit of an arbitrage between the sentiment plays, you're not doing a bad job with process because process is a foreign entity that owns a Chinese asset. And so any improvement in sentiment for foreign entities owning Chinese assets, you'll actually benefit even further from that. And I think process trades at a bigger discount than the underlying assets. So you might actually end up going, uh, doing really well with that one, by the way, yeah. as far as a sentiment trade goes. But yeah. it's equally as worthless if, if nothing uh, happens. Um, or if, sorry, not nothing happens, if, if uh, something happens. Uh, okay, so let's see. I'm trying to see before we wrap up because we're at the three hour mark and I do have to do timestamps. Mm -hmm. after this if you guys haven't noticed i've been i've been attempting to give you guys timestamps. uh so any of you coming late it, check back in about an hour and there will be timestamps on this live stream and you can just enjoy the content with the timestamps. hey no worries man hey that's that's what it's for i also recommend if you want to look at like the uh, library of you know calls you can check out the one about netflix so there's a long the longest one i have on netflix has yep. a little funny thumbnail and stuff it, it gives you the whole thesis on netflix i the reason why i'm shouting it out is i recently saw a pitch of on netflix from a uh, platform that charges a significant amount of money for it and when i watched it um it's actually roughly all the points that i actually outlaid in that video and that video i have is free so if that person's thesis is correct which i'm biased to say yes and they made those points. There's a free video on YouTube that gives you all of those points and gives you a little bit, you know, I guess in a video format, all the details that you probably need. Um, if you're interested in Netflix, I haven't made any new videos on Netflix since then. Cause I, well, not since then, I think I've made like updates on live streams, et cetera, but I haven't made any big videos since then. Cause that video, it's still, I'm not one of those YouTubers that like spams out stock videos on the same stock over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. There's plenty of those out there and they provide, I think zero value. If you did a good video, it's evergreen content. I know that in stock YouTube, they don't treat it like that. But I think if you've done good research, it should be, I guess, at least valued as evergreen content. Because um, things shouldn't change that much. They can. And if it does, then I do make an update. But not much has changed since that original video. Same with the meta video. Nothing has really changed. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see. Uh, did Intel report earnings? I've been so distracted. Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. I've been I've been out of Intel. Um, there's my disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh, it depends. Uh, are we talking like personal finance or like career no, in the career field? Yeah. So. Yeah. I used a lot of Tableau mm -hmm. and I used some SQL, but I used a lot of Tableau. But I think it was almost because, at least in the ap academic field, uh, Salesforce was, uh, especially towards the beginning when they first acquired it, yeah. were pushing really hard on, on you know those later uh, classes uh, that uh, graduates would be proficient in Tableau. Yeah. Anecdotally, uh, I heard that Tableau has been slipping in quality lately, but that's purely anecdotal like from other people I, I have nothing to base that off of personally yeah i mean so 
uh, on the radar, I guess. No, no, I'm not based on the West Coast. I'm based on East Coast. So yeah, we are I am greater same. Midwest. <laughs> I used to be greater Midwest. And now what? No, no way. No, no. You were like, that was like Southwest, Bobby. <laughs> oh, sorry, Southwest. Yeah. Well, I mean, some might say it's its own thing. I, I was talking about the time zone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's Central Time Zone then, but that's me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Oh, I guess they reported last week. Question. Mark? Yes. Yeah. Oh, what am I talking about? They did. Report. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, we they did. did. We yeah, and, covered it. Yeah, we and, and it was like. It. Yeah. That was. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Brain fart. Wow. We literally covered it in the club. In my defense, I'm not a holder. Therefore. <laughs> yeah, we literally no no we literally covered it, commented on it, we watched it live. Yep. Okay, yep. summary that I have to tell you, um, and this is the same information I gave to the club before earnings. Um, you you guys really think I should sometimes publish the private content occasionally, like in parcels I, later? I'm, I, I can only speak for myself, not for others. Uh, I honestly don't think there's a problem with that. Um, other people may have uh, their own gripes, and that that may be legitimate, in which case I apologize, but that's just my own opinion. I'll put it to a vote. I'll put it to a vote for the club members. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I don't see why not. Like, if it's afterwards, like, I'll do like a like a one month after basis. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll I'll put it like on a one month after basis because you know I still think some of the commentary and analysis could be you know useful at least for as a, for a framework. But um, so what we discussed and had a conversation about Intel going into earnings is that the price of Intel was pricing in a lot of success that Intel had yet to have proven. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Intel was trading really close to the $50 mark. So um, again, this is not me saying this hindsight 2020. This is me saying before uh, it is on video. <laughs> um, it's not just it's just not on public for content, but any of the club members can kind of attest to this. So the going into earnings, what we were discussing was the main thesis is predicated on them getting to some uh, some fab success rate of being the clear number two just behind Taiwan Semi. And that's like the best that they could probably hope for, at least the best that I could hope for. And then the market seemingly got really ahead of itself. And Intel had stellar performance in um, in the prior year. And so if I pull up the one year chart, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And so a lot yeah. of YouTubers who invest in this lost money. <laughs> you so, don't say. Yeah. So, um, very few, I think, YouTubers actually made money in, in Intel. And the Intel thesis, again, I think it just got really ahead of itself. And last earnings really showed us that. They're nowhere near proving that they've made significant strides. So I think for Intel, there's nothing wrong with just waiting and letting them prove themselves. Um, and again, I don't know if the market will give you that opportunity. For me, it's just I'm not adding further. Uh, if we see a significant pullback, I will, I'm willing to add. Or if they start to show me significant progress in their plants, then I will say, okay, I think I can add at these higher prices because the reality has changed. Right now, I can't make that justification because the reality on the ground simply hasn't uh, changed too much. So that that's that's where I'm at in a short and sweet way. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Um, I think that's a good place to call it off because we are at three hours and 30 minutes. We, we did a, it's a long one. So if you guys are just watching and you're getting late here late, feel free, by the way, if you did enjoy this live stream and you haven't liked, feel free to leave us a like, and that's how you help us the most. Um, so we are at 48 likes and over 81 people watching. So if everyone liked the video right now, we should have <laughs> roughly 80, uh, people who like it. If you're watching this later and you liked it, again, just drop a like, uh, if you're old, older, or if you're on Twitter, by the way, the best thing you can do is, is also like it or retweet it. Um, why not both? Thing, hmm? <laughs> no, I'm just well, why not both? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, so one of the things that, um, um, I guess, well, I'll, I'll leave you off with a funnier outro than a normal. Um, and if you're late to the, to the party, you guys can check out the, um, 
video in about an hour and I should have timestamps uh, for you because uh, I'll stay up a little bit later and, and just go through and just place the timestamps. So uh, hopefully you guys like the uh, my gosh, is this just a trend to just say like congrats and then follow it up? By <laughs> you, it's going to be embedded into the lore. <laughs> love you, babe. Okay. Thank you, Henry. If it doesn't work out, it's we feel bad for you and also F you, Fabio. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for it. Oh, I agree with this. Mattel should not be a 43 right now. Um, all right. And I loaded up at 31. Hell yeah, man. Uh, all right. With that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully you guys enjoy this slightly altered. And some of you might know where this comes from, but slightly altered outro video. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. F***ing thing sucks. Yeah. Besides making these raps and complaining about school and fucking watching Entourage all the way through Well, I don't know what you know, you can't fathom me and you can't handle low But if you get it right, then you could get some more and you could get the better You could get your hands on some my, my, my.